Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. My plants have billions of evil points. Chapter 51 At this time, the goblins who were sorting out the accounts of the day ushered in a special guest. This is a child wearing a luxurious robe, with a hood covering his face. He walks in front and is followed by a heavily wrapped bodyguard. The bodyguard was carrying a suitcase in his hand, which looked very important. Full upstart style. The leading child raised his head, looked at the words engraved on the silver gate of Gringotts, shrugged his shoulders, and walked in calmly. There are two gates to Gringotts, one bronze and one silver, with a warning engraved on it. Strangers are welcome, but be careful what happens to greed. Blindly ask for, get for nothing. We'll be severely punished. So if you want to take it from our underground vault. A treasure that was never yours. Thief, you have been warned. Be careful not to bring treasures, but evil rewards. The office goblins sitting at the counter raised their heads and looked at the uninvited guest, their eyes full of scrutiny. They could see very clearly that the real guest was probably only the handsome child, and the man behind him was just an insignificant servant. The pair of master and servant came to the main counter, and the bodyguards, who only showed a pair of eyes, looked at the goblin condescendingly. Sorry, too, we are going to close. If you need to withdraw money, please do it as soon as possible tomorrow. The goblin looked at the bodyguard without the slightest panic. Oh, is it okay to save money? I plan to open a vault, which belongs to me, said the child in a luxurious robe. Open a vault. The goblin behind the counter changed his expression instantly, with a bright smile on his face, our vault is not cheap, and the vault with permanent use rights costs 2,000 galleons. Of course, if you deposit the money at once enough can enjoy a certain discount. 2,000. Hearing this number, Midgard, who was the bodyguard, trembled. Why not grab it? The goblin noticed the strangeness of the bodyguard and looked at Midgard with disdain. A bodyguard is a bodyguard, and he was so frightened at only 2,000 galleons. But this child is very calm, is it the heir of the big family? But a family with such an identity already has a treasury with permanent use right. In fact, Leonard couldn't help but flinch at the price. What is the concept of 2,000 galleons? Leonard had seen the salaries in the world of Harry Potter in his previous life, and the weekly salary of professors at Hogwarts was only 50 galleons. Hogwarts professors can also be considered a high-paying group, and it takes more than half a year without eating or drinking to buy the permanent right to use a vault. This is just a treasury, and there will be no property in it. It's hard to imagine how the notoriously poor Weasley family managed to own a vault here. It's okay to lock up less than 50 deposits in a vault worth 2,000. It can only be said that the Weasley family can be regarded as the richest ancestors. He paid a lot of money for this operation. He specially anonymously bought clothes for himself and Midgard at the Outer Clothes Store, a well-known luxury clothing store in Diagon Alley. Just these two clothes cost him nearly a hundred galleons. If this operation fails, not only the werewolf organization in Midgard will go bankrupt, but Leonard himself will feel distressed for a long time. He earned all the money. Is there only permanent use right? No short-term rental? Leonard asked. The goblin looked at the other party and shook his head, sorry, we don't have the term short-term rental. I can't see the face clearly, and I can't tell the body type at this age, so I can't even tell whether it is a man or a woman. There is no concept of short-term rental, Gringotts is a treasure house built by a group of greedy goblins to store a large amount of gold coins, serving those families with a long history. Leonard snapped his fingers and said, there are a lot of galleons, let's talk about your discount. Under the vigilant eyes of the goblin, Midgard put the suitcase in his hand on the counter and opened it. Suddenly, a golden light shot out from the suitcase, almost blinding the goblin's eyes. I saw that the seemingly small suitcase was actually nearly a thousand cubic meters in size. Apart from the kerosene lamps hanging around it, it was filled with golden galleons, almost popping out of the suitcase. Up. The color of gold coins suddenly appeared in the goblin's eyes. He greedily picked up a few galleons, and after confirming that they were real, he stuck his head into the box. The golden color below made the elf smile even bigger, rubbing his hands and smiling at Leonard. Although I haven't counted it yet, it is indeed a considerable amount. I can give you a 10, 20% discount for this amount. With a heartbroken expression on his face, he described the 98% discount as if it was a 1% discount. 
But this is normal for a money-grubbing goblin. Leonard's face hidden under the hood twitched, and he said, Don't talk nonsense, I need to pick a vault. Are there any vaults that are vacant now? We have vacant vaults in almost every area, which can meet all your needs. The goblin took out a brand new brochure like a pug dog. For example, this is the vault we built in the last hundred years. HMPH, don't take those out to be an eyesore. Leonard snorted coldly, I don't like putting my treasury together with family treasuries with no background. I need remote, old ones, where they are safe enough. This, most of our ancient vaults are full, and it's hard to find. The goblin hesitated. I don't care, I only care about my face. Leonard tried his best to make his voice full of arrogance. But the magic used in the ancient treasury is quite special, and the maintenance cost is very high, so, the goblin hinted frantically. Money is not a problem. Leonard knocked on the counter. Three thousand galleons, give me a sufficiently old vault. Okay, sir, I can tell you as soon as you enter the door. You are a noble wizard with taste. The goblin grinned all the way to his ears, we'll pick out the lowest vault for you, the vaults there are almost as long as the history of Gringotts. Take us to take a look first, I need to make sure that it is as old as you said. Leonard said. Of course, this is your due right. The goblin jumped down from behind the counter. We have to clean there. There will be absolutely no foxes and other pests. Please follow me. The goblin took out an old booklet from behind the counter, blew the dust off it, turned around and smiled at Leonard, and led the way. The plan went well. Leonard naturally took out his pocket watch and looked at the time on it, nodding to Midgard. Midgard gave Leonard a thumbs up calmly, then lifted the box and continued to act as a bodyguard to follow behind the two. Below Gringotts is a hollow that has been almost hollowed out, and people can't help but sweat for Diagon Alley and Nocturne Alley. No, given the size and size of the void, Leonard was even a little concerned about the London Underground Line. Like the crooked buildings in Diagon Alley, the underground of Gringotts doesn't pay much attention to mechanical support. Newton doesn't care about anything here, and it's all up to his brother to be awesome. Leonard and Midgard got on a rail pulley under the guidance of the goblin. With the activation of the magic, the pulley went down the curved and rotating rails, heading deep into the ground. Please sit still, we still have a long way to go. The goblin controlled the pulley and said, there are vaults built in the last few hundred years, just as you are worried, although the defense here is also very good, but the tighter the defense of the treasury below the covenant. Leonard looked around curiously, looking at the rocks and vaults that violated mechanics, and from time to time, he could see the pulleys that other guests passed by led by the goblin. Please hold your breath, the goblin suddenly called out. Leonard looked at the goblin suspiciously, and suddenly heard a rumbling sound in his ears, and at the same time a gust of water mist rushed towards his face. Not far ahead, a waterfall fell and passed by the track. Leonard quickly held his breath and walked through the current. However, when the tackle rushed out of the waterfall, Leonard found that his clothes were not even stained with water. The water of this waterfall seems to be weightless. Although you can feel the wetness, it will not wet your clothes. Only the ancient shoots under Leonard's clothes seemed to feel something, sticking out their heads and shaking the branches and leaves, seeming very comfortable. That's the anti-thief waterfall, which can wash away any magic. Only the vault below will pass through here. The goblin explained, emphasizing that the vault below is safer than the vault above. Gringotts is the safest bank in the world. It is absolutely safe to put Garen here. No one can invade here. In short, it means, the absolute value of your money. Leonard didn't speak, just nodded reservedly. As the trolley gradually deepened, the surrounding light became increasingly dim. Soon the trolley reached a complex of buildings, deflected the track and stopped slowly. Here we are, here it is, vault number. 12. The goblin jumped out of the car and said. Leonard and Midgard also jumped out of the car, looking around. There are also many guards here, and those goblins stand in a place with a wide view and have a panoramic view of the treasury. It's almost here. Leonard winked at Midgard. Midgard understood, and quietly crushed a glass ball in his pocket. At the back door of Gringotts, Marcus, who was on standby, stared at the palm of his hand, raising his head from time to time to pay attention to the movement around him. Marcus held a small alchemy artifact in his right hand, his eyes fell on it as if expecting something. As if waiting for something. Suddenly, 
the alchemy creation cracked, and Marcus stood up with a look in his eyes. It's time to start working. Taking advantage of no one around looking at him, Marcus took out his wand and swung it at the back door of Gringotts in the distance. Boom! A mass of flames destroyed the back door of Gringotts, and the huge explosion instantly triggered the Gringotts alarm, which also caused panic among passers by in Diagon Alley. In the smoke and dust, Marcus didn't hesitate at all, and escaped into the crowd amidst the chaos. According to plan, his task has been completed. Frightened by the sudden explosion, the goblin straightened his hat and hurriedly released a magic signal into the air. The aurors patrolling around Gringotts immediately surrounded and surrounded Gringotts. Inside Gringotts, the signal of the attack was transmitted layer by layer, and soon spread throughout Gringotts. At this moment, Quirrell, who was sneaking to the Hogwarts vault underground, shuddered because Voldemort, who was wrapped around his neck, suddenly tightened his body. Master, Master, Quirrell asked in horror, what's the matter with you? The poisonous snake poked its head out from Quirrell's neckline, looking around viciously, I have a bad feeling. Bad premonition, Quirrell wondered, did something happen? They were so deep underground that they hadn't heard the explosion from the back door of Gringotts. I don't know, but we have to hurry up. Voldemort shrank back after speaking. Voldemort's abnormal performance made Quirrell a little uneasy, he hurriedly urged the goblin leading the way, hurry up, hurry up and take us to the vault. Yes, the goblin nodded, and was about to speed up her pace when suddenly a huge shadow flashed past her head. Quirrell looked up sharply, and suddenly saw a dragon with a chain around its neck hovering above their heads. Unregistered intruder found, shouted a goblin mounted on a dragon's back as he poked his head out and saw Quirrell below. He pulled the bridle full of spikes on the dragon's neck, and the dragon let out a roar, and the flames in its mouth converged into a mouthful of hot thick phlegm towards Quirrell below. The blinding firelight illuminated Quirrell's frightened face. At the same time, deep in the Gringotts underground vault, the news of the attack on Gringotts has reached the ears of the goblins stationed here through special channels. Those goblins in guard uniforms immediately moved into action, scrambling to leave on the pulley upwards. What happened? Leonard asked deliberately as the guards left. The goblin in front of her smiled reluctantly, it's just a little commotion, don't worry. He couldn't say that Gringotts, which he swore to be absolutely safe, was invaded just now, could he? That smile is extremely eye-catching. The so-called goblin is actually a transliteration of goblin, that is, the so-called, goblin, not the kind of elf with wings. In this way, one can imagine what kind of face it is. A fake smile squeezed out by this kind of face can definitely stop a child from crying at night. That is to say, Leonard is not a child mentally, otherwise he howled twice. Really, Leonard glanced at Midgard. Midgard nodded, quietly came behind the goblin, and raised his wand. The soul is out of the body. There was an undetectable sound, and a plume of white smoke rose from the goblin's head and merged into Midgard's wand. Okay, he's under control. Midgard put away his wand, what should I do next? Of course it's about picking targets. Leonard took the booklet from the goblin's hand and looked at the list on it. Gringotts has a long history, and this bank established because of the goblin's greedy nature has extremely tenacious vitality. In the nearly thousand years of changes in the wizarding world, countless wizarding families have risen, and countless families have declined. Families bound by blood will dissipate due to the death of members and various accidents, but racial preferences will not. But all normal-born goblins have been greedy for treasure since they were young, and this nature supports them to flock to Gringotts, a bank that can legally store a large amount of galleons. Every family has its own vault at Gringotts, but the vault is eternal, the family is not. Sometimes the treasury is still there, and there is a lot of money, but the family is gone because of an accident. In this case, unless there is accurate evidence to prove that a person has the right of inheritance of the family to inherit the Gringotts treasury, otherwise the treasury will be abandoned. Of course, the goblins at Gringotts would claim that they wouldn't use any of the Curry's galleons, and they didn't. The goblins' view of money is very strange. Their view of money is a bit similar to that of dragons in fantasy novels. They love treasures, but they only like them. What they like is not the added value of treasures, but just treasures. Because the goblins believe that all goblin creations belong to the goblins and not the people who hire them. The same is true for Galen, the metal used to make Galen is the fairy's magic gold, so all galleons should belong to fairies. 
It's just that this idea ended without a problem because of the wizard's fist, and in the end it could only evolve into the goblin's bank to store galleons to satisfy the goblin's insignificant and strange desires. That is to say, the older the treasury, the more likely it will be abandoned, and the galleons in it are a waste, so it's better to use it to rob the rich and help the poor. Here Leonard was looking for the abandoned part of the nearby vault, while Midgard opened the suitcase in his hand and took Gallon out of it. After taking out about six or seven hundred galleons, Midgard walked to the pulley, took the suitcase and dumped it on the cliff next to the track-like garbage. A large number of stones covered with gold paint rolled out of the suitcase and fell towards the bottomless hollow. Is it okay to just throw the stone here? Midgard asked while throwing it. No problem, those paints will fade by themselves after a while, so what if a pile of common stones are found? Leonard studied the roster without looking up. There weren't many galleons in the suitcase. In fact, only Leonard and the werewolf's money totaled more than 600 galleons. The rest were all stones painted with special gold paint. Leonard used the light of the kerosene lamp combined with the galleons piled on the surface to play a trick on the goblin, making him think that Leonard has a room full of galleons. Blinded by greed, the goblin is willing to choose the ancient vault at Leonard's beck and call. Among the ancient vaults, there must be many abandoned vaults, and those are Leonard's goals. After that, Markarth, who was squatting outside, caused a commotion, making the goblins of Gringotts think that someone was invading, so as to find Quirrell who did not take the usual path. When everyone was lured away, the helpless goblin could only obediently submit to the imperious curse. Now, Leonard and Midgard standing here represent half of Leonard's plan. That's right, Midgard nodded put away the suitcase and ignored Garen who was piled on the ground, and walked to Leonard's side, have you picked it? It's been selected, there are 17 vaults in total. Leonard threw the list to the goblin and pointed to the number on it. Take us there, quote. Take us there, Midgard repeated. After all, the goblin is now controlled by her imperious curse and will only listen to her. Yes, the goblin agreed, and led Midgard and Leonard towards the first vault. When he came to the door of the vault, the goblin raised his finger and slid across the door, and with the crisp sound of the latch being undone, the door slowly opened. Midgard looked inside expectantly, but when the door was fully opened, his expression became disappointed. There were no galleons inside, just piles of dusty books. Next, Leonard calmly ordered without any surprise. Next, hurry up, Midgard said hastily. The goblin immediately closed the door and moved on to the next vault. Golden curry doesn't have to be all galleons, Leonard glanced at the disappointed Midgard, take your time and don't worry. In fact, Leonard is very interested in those books. According to the goblin, the vault here has a similar history as Gringotts, and many of the books in it are probably Precious's only copies. It's a pity that they don't have time, and they have no way to get anything other than Garen. Only Galen can appear in their chests. The second vault, the third vault, Soon a few people had already seen five vaults, without exception, these gold curries were filled with other things, not even a galleon. Midgard's mentality has collapsed, and even Leonard has some doubts about life. Isn't this luck too bad? Fortunately, the sixth vault finally gave them a surprise. After opening the vault, the golden light reflected from the kerosene lamp almost blinded them. There are a lot of gold galleons piled up like a mountain, and there is not even a single silver or copper coin inside. The pile of gold galleons makes Midgard's eyes turn red. Quickly pack it, Leonard said, looking at his pocket watch. It took them ten minutes to reach here by the pulley, and the time from the modern vault to the number twelve vault was seven minutes. The pulleys here are all the same, counting the back and forth, it will take at least fourteen minutes for the guards who left to take a look at it. All they had to do was fill the chest with galleons in 14 minutes. With the help of magic, Midgard quickly threw all the galleons in the vault into the suitcase, which was only one-third full at this time. Go on, eight more minutes, Leonard urged. Hurry up, hurry up, Midgard, who pretended to be cool, hurriedly urged the goblin loudly. At this time, she was already too excited to restrain. Next, Leonard and Midgard were lucky, and all the vaults they opened were those with Garen. There were as many galleons as these golden curry, and soon, the suitcase in Midgard's hand was full, but Midgard was not satisfied, and wanted to put some in his pocket. Can't take it. Why, if you take more, one less werewolf will suffer. Midgard's eyes were red, 
and if it wasn't for the remaining reason, she would even kill Leonard who stopped her. As many galleons as there are in our boxes, we should put as many galleons as we want. It must not exceed the amount we showed before. Leonard pointed to Garen, who was obviously higher than the original height in the suitcase, not only can you no longer take them, but you have to put them back. Put it back. Midgard was almost returned to his ancestors by this sentence, and there was a low whine in his throat, as if he was protecting food. But she quickly realized that she had lost her composure, and let go of Garen in her hand, sorry. I. I understand. Leonard waved his hand. If there is no restriction, I would like to put all these galleons back, but we can't do this. If we want to get out of here openly, we can't have a little loophole. I understand. Midgard took a deep breath glanced at the gallon in his hand, and reluctantly threw them into the vault along with the extra gallon in the box. But Leonard snatched the suitcase again, measured the length with his wand, quickly confirmed the original height, and threw back the extra dozen galleons. This frenzied attitude made Midgard stunned for a while. Is it necessary to be so cautious? Can those goblins still use a ruler to measure? Midgard couldn't help asking. Don't be afraid of ten thousand, just in case. Leonard closed the box and said calmly. What's in case? Midgard obviously had never heard of this literal translation of the Oriental proverb. It means that we are all prepared for things that are sure to happen, so we are not afraid, but we must also be careful of things that have a small probability but may happen. Leonard explained, Oriental wisdom, remember it is good for you. Okay, I'll try my best. Midgard muttered, seeing the vault door slowly closing under the control of the goblin, Midgard took a deep breath, allowing his reason to return to his own head. Is it okay to do this? It wasn't until this time that Midgard began to think, what should the goblins do if they open the vault and find that there are no or few galleons in it? What should I do? Leonard looked at Midgard amusedly. They won't find out, because the goblins have guaranteed that these are vaults with permanent use rights. But they have the ability to open these vaults. Midgard obviously didn't turn the corner but they don't have this right. Even if they did, they wouldn't say it out loud. This will only make Gringotts boycotted by all wizards. Leonard said unscrupulously, the trust between wizards and goblins is very fragile. Goblins won't and dare not bet. Even if they do open the vault, they will only suffer a dark loss. Well, it seems that all of this is in your calculations. Midgard rubbed his temples, what should we do next? Go back to the original place, wake up this Mr. Goblin, and let him take us to the number 12 vault. Leonard said, remember to dispose of the used wand. Midgard carried two wands with him, one of his own was a spare, it was one of the wands of the two werewolf wizards whose head was shot by Fenrir, the one she used the imperious curse was the werewolf who died tragically wizard's wand. Understood. Midgard nodded. After the two and the goblin returned to the pulley, Midgard touched the goblin's imperious curse, added an oblivion curse, and then broke off the wand and threw it into the hollow. The goblin woke up in a trance, looked at Leonard in confusion for a while, where are we talking? It's nice to see it seamlessly. Leonard secretly gave Midgard a thumbs up and said to the goblin, you are going to take us to the vault, but I think the guards seem to have left. Do we need to wait a while? The guards are gone. Oh, yes, someone broke into Gringotts. The goblin, who was in a trance, accidentally slipped his mouth. He looked embarrassed for a moment, and then said calmly, it's all trivial, don't worry about it, let's wait for them to come back and then go to the vault. No problem, Leonard nodded frankly. Five minutes later, the guards returned to their posts on a pulley, but there was a more glamorous looking goblin on one of the pulleys. The pulley stopped next to the pulley that Leonard and the others were riding on, and then the goblin jumped off and walked in front of Leonard and the others. Sorry, guest, the goblin said politely, someone just invaded Gringotts, and the next step is a routine inspection. Is someone intruding? I thought you Gringotts were absolutely safe. Leonard said calmly. Sorry, but we didn't lose any of the guest's belongings, and the intruder has been driven away by us. The goblin said neither humble nor humble, if you have any complaints about us, you don't need to open a vault with us, but the inspection cannot be avoided. Quote, why don't I open the vault here? You guys are safe anyway. Leonard snapped his fingers and asked Midgard to come over. You guys check. Wait a minute. The special elf took out a bottle full of liquid from his arms, sprinkled a little on the head of the elf next to Leonard, and nodded after confirming that it was correct. 
That should be the water from the anti-thief waterfall. Midgard pouted, admiring Leonard even more. Fortunately, she followed Leonard's instructions completely and got in touch with the imperious curse on the goblin, otherwise she would definitely be exposed. As for the forgotten porridge, don't worry, it will take effect in real time. Anti-thief waterfall can only eliminate magic but not the consequences of magic. For example, the transformation spell will be eliminated, because the magic of the transformation spell maintains the deformed state of the object, and the magic elimination will change back to the original state. Inspection begins, sir, the goblin said as he opened Leonard's suitcase, and a golden light shone from it. Seeing Garen slowly filling the box, this unusual elf was also taken aback for a moment. He glanced at the employee elf beside him and motioned him to take a look. The goblin employee took a look, then took out a measuring tape under Midgard's speechless eyes. No problem, supervisor, said the goblin employee. Very good, the goblin known as the supervisor nodded turned to Leonard and said, I'm sorry to disturb you, but can I show you your wand? This is a necessary inspection. Midgard almost laughed when he heard it, and subconsciously wanted to take out his wand, but was interrupted by Leonard waving his hand. It's endless, isn't it? Leonard's sharp eyes under the hood cast on the goblin supervisor, your employee is right here, you can ask him if you have anything to do, instead of trying to make things difficult for us guests. Although they are not afraid of inspection, it seems too strange to let the other party check. Although no one may be aware of this aspect, Leonard, who absolutely does not leave any hidden dangers for himself, will not let this loophole go. It's not Mr. Making Things Difficult, the goblin supervisor explained. Leonard's sudden outburst made the supervisor look a bit ugly, obviously he was very cooperative before. This is making things difficult. Leonard's voice was raised, but it was a pity that the child's voice was obviously not dignified. This is a necessary inspection. Leonard's attitude made the supervisor a little suspicious, and he said stubbornly, if our behavior makes you feel dissatisfied, you can report us, and we will be punished afterwards. Really, Leonard sneered, that's too cheap for you guys, you can check it, but if there is no problem after the check, I want you to transfer the permanent right to use the number 12 vault to me for free. It's impossible to transfer it to you for free. The goblin supervisor said indifferently, I don't have the right to make decisions, but I can give you the right to use the direct channel for a period of one year. Straight passage. What's that? Leonard frowned, suspecting that the elf in front of him was trying to trick him. It's a special service exclusively for wealthy or prestigious wizards. They can be sent directly to the exclusive reception room through teleportation, and they can go to the vault at any time. The goblin supervisor explained, if you want to maintain this channel after one year, you need to pay an annual maintenance fee of 300 galleons. Sounds okay. Leonard was very satisfied when he heard that it was some kind of privilege, and the value of 300 galleons was not bad. But what kind of rich man can spend 300 galleons a year to maintain a special channel, what a luxury. Leonard handed over his wand, and at his gesture, Midgard also handed over his wand. Leonard's original intention here is that he doesn't want to cooperate with Midgard as if he can't wait. As a, noble wizard, it seems very unreasonable to cooperate with the goblin's unreasonable demands. Regardless of whether it is useful or not, first refute it and shake your face, this is also in line with the personality. Soon under the effect of the flashback spell, the wands of the two were checked and found to be clean. The goblin supervisor apologized without sincerity, and left with a gloomy face. The reason for the gloomy here is naturally not because of the regret that nothing was found, but simply because of the extra cost. Goblins are such contradictory creatures, because of the wizard's law, they have to make corresponding promises, and they will be mad at themselves for paying for the promises. Leonard's expression was very relaxed. He watched you, the goblin supervisor, leave with a smile, and then looked at the goblin staff. Take us to Vault 12, Leonard said. So far, his plan has been successfully completed. Okay sir. The employee goblin nodded, and led Leonard and Midgard to the door of the number 12 vault, and then repeated the same method to open the vault. This is one of the oldest vaults in Gringotts. It was rented for a long time until the contract was completed. The goblin pointed to the vault. An extra year of direct access to Gringotts. Okay, I see, you wait outside. Leonard waved away the goblin. Okay, sir. The goblin nodded knowingly, and walked outside the vault door. P. 
people are going to store their belongings, so naturally he, an outsider, can't stare at them. After the goblin left the vault, Leonard said to Midgard, stay half of the gold coins. Of course, wasn't this agreed before? Midgard had no objection and grinned. All proceeds are shared by one person, and the treasury belongs to Leonard, so naturally only half is kept. A large amount of galleons flowed out of the suitcase. It was roughly estimated that there were at least tens of thousands of galleons. Midgard didn't even plan to count them. After estimating the volume, it arrogantly began to dump galleons. This kind of physical work naturally does not require Leonard to intervene. He yawned and rubbed his eyes. Although the plan went well, Leonard's nerves were tense along the way, and he felt a little sleepy when he relaxed. Just as he was rubbing his eyes, he felt his cuff move, and then, a sprout with silver leaves stretched out. What are you doing out here? Go back quickly. Leonard tapped the leaves of the young shoots and whispered. It's just that Naoya, who has always been very obedient, didn't obey Leonard's order, but shook her own leaves instead, and a sense of urgency came from Naoya. It seemed to be longing for something, eager to lead Leonard the way. Leonard was a little puzzled, and walked in the golden curry following the guidance of the ancient sprouts, and soon he came to the end of the vault, an ordinary wall. The wall was empty, but the buds stretched out as if they wanted to touch something. What are you doing? Leonard asked suspiciously. The bud twisted twice, and the leaves on both sides curled up, forming the shape of eyes on both sides. I, magic vision, Leonard understood in seconds, and connected to Naoya's magic vision with doubts. The moment the vision was connected, the wall in front of him changed dramatically. In the center of the wall, a mysterious flame-like pattern composed of two lines appeared, and a square gap appeared at the edge of the pattern. This is a door. Leonard was taken aback, and subconsciously stretched out his hand when he saw the ancient sprout who couldn't wait to get close to the strange pattern. The moment his finger touched the symbol, Leonard felt a large amount of fragmented knowledge pouring into his mind, and these memories hooked the knowledge deposited in Leonard's mind from the ancient buds. A lot of knowledge is spliced with knowledge, but more knowledge is deposited again. In the end, these messy knowledge only form a complete piece of knowledge that can be read. Leonard subconsciously took two steps back. He was so dazed that he almost fell on the galleons all over the floor and was buried alive by gold coins. Fortunately, Midgard caught him in time. Leonard, what's the matter with you? Midgard's concerned voice came, but it seemed to come from a distant horizon. Leonard's attention was all attracted by the complete knowledge, and as the knowledge gradually integrated into his brain, an ancient magic with a strong historical flavor appeared. It was magic that Leonard had never seen before, and it didn't have any resemblance to the magic he had learned. But Leonard knew that it was definitely not the first time he had seen this magic. The last time he saw it was when he was strengthening the ancient sprouts. Before Leonard's eyes, the image that appeared when strengthening the ancient sprouts appeared. It was a scene where a wizard raised his wand and summoned violent thunder to wash the earth. With the change of the wand's gesture, the wildly dancing silver snake suddenly merged into one, turning into a huge pillar of lightning with claws and teeth, hitting a mountain peak. The mountain fell apart and turned into flat ground under the powerful magic. Leonard was dumbfounded and didn't even notice Midgard's anxious cry. Leonard, Leonard, Midgard shook Leonard's shoulders, seeing Leonard's absent-minded eyes, she was anxious, and subconsciously raised her hand to give Leonard a, gentle, awakening. Wait, wait, fortunately, at the critical moment, Leonard's eyes regained focus, and seeing the slap that was about to fall, Leonard was so frightened that he almost jumped out of Midgard's arms. What are you going to do? Can I still live after you slap me? Leonard shouted. Didn't I see you pass? I want to wake you up through external stimulation. Midgard said. I think you want to send me away. Leonard rubbed his face and stood up. As far as Midgard's body is concerned, not to mention the ability to run horses on the arms, it is still no problem to penetrate a solid wood board in a circle. He still remembers how miserable Fenrir's head was. I'm keeping my strength, and I'm not stupid. Midgard rolled his eyes. What's wrong with you? You fainted all of a sudden. I'm not dizzy, there was a little accident. Leonard said casually. He didn't tell Midgard about the patterns on the walls or the magic that was going on in his head. Now was not the time to talk about that, and neither of them would be safe until they actually left Gringotts. 
I still don't know what kind of secrets are involved in that symbol and the door behind the symbol, and whether it will be very valuable. Leonard will never use unknown interests to test the friendship between others and himself. Midgard also doesn't seem to see the symbols on the wall, which is a good thing. It seems that it is something that can only be seen under the magic vision. As Garen finished, Leonard asked, Well, it's done. Midgard lifted the box. Then let's go. Leonard glanced at the wall again. Compared with Galen who was all over the floor, the mysterious patterns and doors were clearly more attractive. But Garen is also very important. Leonard glanced at the pile of galleons on the ground with a satisfied smile on his face. For a long time, he didn't have to worry about Garen's problems, and he could be a little more reckless when buying anything. The two left the vault, and then the goblin sealed the door and took out a piece of parchment. Sir, tell me your name, said the goblin. Leonard Wilhelm, Leonard said. The goblin nodded and handed the parchment to Leonard, please write down your name. Leonard took the parchment and looked at the contents. This is a contract about the permanent use right of the vault and a one-year exclusive channel, and there is no problem with the content. Leonard checked the contents of the parchment, and then looked at the corners and corners for hidden items that were difficult to notice under the strange eyes of the goblin. He also checked to see if the parchment was layered and whether there was any hidden content on the reverse side. After confirming that it was correct, Leonard signed his name on the parchment. It's always right to be cautious. After everything was done, Leonard and Midgard got on the tackle and began to return to the ground. With the rumbling sound, the tackle continued to accelerate towards the ground. After driving past Thief Falls, Leonard and Midgard quickly noticed something was wrong. The originally dark and mysterious treasury area has become very lively, and there are large areas of damage and signs of landslides in many empty places, all supported by magical power. There are still traces of flames in many places. At first glance, it seems that a terrible war has taken place here. Midgard looked at the traces around him in surprise, then looked at Leonard again, his eyes full of surprise. Leonard looked around and said, it doesn't look like a little trouble here. Don't worry about the guests, everything is under our control. The goblin controlled the tackle and said, as long as the guest's treasury is not damaged, then everything is trivial, isn't it? That's right. Leonard nodded and stopped talking. Soon the two of them and the goblin arrived at the ground and returned to the counter. After sorting out a bunch of documents, the goblin handed Leonard a beautiful box containing a key. Guests please take it well. The goblin watched Leonard take the box and explained, this is a door key to the passage. If you need anything, you can use the door key to reach Gringotts at any time. There will be people there 24 hours waiting for your visit. That is, a magic version of the VIP channel. Leonard nodded, put away the key, and left Gringotts under the gaze of the goblin. Dot dot dot. At the same time, in a residence in Nocturne Alley. The owner of the house died unexpectedly, and fell to the ground without a sound. There was no scar on his body, but his expression was dumbfounded, as if he saw something frightening. The room was filled with a stench of burning, and at the same time there were wailings as if a ghost was killing him. The source of the smell is a mass of scorched flesh and blood. On the abstract face of this lump of flesh and blood, the hollow mouth opened and let out a deep wail. On this lump of flesh and blood, a venomous snake that seemed to be evaporating from its entire body uttered curses. You useless thing, you have caused me to lose so much power, and I haven't got the philosopher's stone yet. The raging sound of the poisonous snake seemed to be piercing the flesh and blood one by one, making the flesh and blood tremble continuously. The poisonous snake looked ferociously, looked at the flesh and blood under him and said fiercely, this body can't hold it anymore, and you. Quirrell, you can't hold it anymore either. The flesh and blood shook, making a begging sound. I know, I know you don't want to die, and I don't want to. The poisonous snake said in a low voice, I will save you, but as a punishment for not doing your job well, I will stay on your body. Flesh froze, and even stopped twitching. Don't be afraid. Although the life I boarded will die, but as long as you get the Philosopher's Stone, then you and I can live forever. The serpent's voice is full of temptation, without my parasite, you will die soon. The flesh and blood slowly returned to its original state, as if agreeing with the poisonous snake's words. Very well, this is my faithful servant, and such a servant is worthy of my saving. As the snake's voice gradually became ethereal, 
the snake's body evaporated completely, and a cloud of black air condensed in the air and penetrated into the flesh and blood. The flesh and blood trembled crazily as if enduring great pain. During this pain, the flesh and blood skin regenerated rapidly, the burnt part fell off, and pink tender flesh grew. Soon, a thin, extremely weak Quirrell stood up slowly. Thank you for saving me, master. Quirrell's trembling voice sounded. If you really thank me, then you should get the Philosopher's Stone as soon as possible, go to Hogwarts, the Philosopher's Stone must be there. Voldemort's figure sounded from the back of Quirrell's head, and Quirrell shuddered, feeling a strange tremor in the back of his head. There seems to be something occupying there. Quirrell turned around slowly, under the glare of the evening sun, a strange snake face twisted on the back of Quirrell's head. A huge sum of galleons was brought back to Flip Lane by Midgard. In the same courtyard, Midgard poured half a box of galleons into the room, and the light of gold flowed in the room, making people enchanted. Marcus looked at Garen who was covering the floor with some astonishment. He actually didn't know what Leonard and Midgard were doing. The news he got was just staring at someone, and at a critical moment, someone invaded the ancient world. The illusion of the Ling Pavilion. But he didn't expect that the two would take this opportunity to snatch Gringotts. Still in a weird way. They walked into Gringotts openly, and walked out again openly, using the money in Gringotts to buy a vault for themselves, and took a lot of galleons with them. And those greedy goblins have to say welcome to them next time. The whole process reveals an absurd feeling, giving Marcus the illusion of watching an absurd comedy. Leonard sat nearby, staring silently at Markarth as Midgard roamed the Golden Galleon. Marcus didn't expect that in front of this pile of Garen, someone could resist looking at Garen and look at him, a middle-aged man. It is natural for Leonard to do this, and the money is touching. Although Midgard believes in Marcus and thinks that the other party is his confidant, as a friend, he feels that he needs to appraise this confidant from the perspective of a bystander, real reaction. After all, having such a large amount of property is something to be happy about, and Midgard couldn't wait to share his joy with his people. But it would be bullshit if his subordinates turned against each other because of a piece of property. Fortunately, Marcus withstood the test. Although he could see his shock at the room full of Garen, there was no greed in his eyes. This may have a lot to do with the fact that the other party has nothing to worry about. His wife and children died at his own hands. As a werewolf wizard, he probably has no desires or desires. Ha ha ha, we have so much money, we won't have to worry about money for a long time. Midgard laughed wildly. I want to send money to everyone, 100 for each. No, 1000. Leonard, who was listening to Midgard's fun, felt that something was wrong the more he heard it. He glanced at Marcus, then looked at Midgard and asked, what are you going to do with this money? Of course, buy potion materials and some food to stock up. The wolf cubs need these things. Midgard said excitedly, with the potion ingredients, it will be much cheaper for us to find someone to make wolfbane potion, and we won't starve if we use the food, so life will be much easier. Leonard looked at the excited Midgard blankly, and Marcus, who had the same puzzled look, heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately, he thought all werewolf wizards were so virtuous, but at least Markarth seemed normal, and understood the stupidity of Midgard's plan. It's a pity that he can't speak, otherwise he could persuade Midgard. Now it's up to Leonard. Then, let's finish eating these galleons together, will the belly be big enough to fight hunger? Leonard sarcastically asked. Finish, how is it possible, these galleons can last for a long time? Midgard looked satisfied, at least ten years. What about ten years later? Leonard asked, let's go back to the past together and go hungry for nine meals in three days. Midgard smiled awkwardly, it's not that exaggerated, let's talk about things ten years later. The werewolf wizard ten years later will not be the werewolf wizard now. Leonard stood up, after ten years of asking for money, the werewolf wizards are all abolished, and it may be difficult for you to let them live a miserable life. Not only will they not remember how well you gave them money these years, but they will resent you for not giving them any money. Leonard picked up a gold coin, tossed it in his hand, and watched the golden light flashing on it. Hold on. At that time, you will be the enemy of the werewolf wizard group. Leonard's voice was ice cold, and it was clearly a sweet child's voice, but it made Midgard shiver uncontrollably. No way, everyone yearns for an ordinary life. Midgard whispered. 
When you have money, you naturally live a harmonious and ordinary life. If you have no money, you are the chief culprit who destroys the harmonious life. This is the same for muggles and wizards. Leonard said, take a step back, even if those werewolf wizards didn't blame you, do you think they can put down their dignity and endure the discrimination of others and go to work for others after 10 years of leisure? Midgard was silent, she seemed to understand what Leonard meant. You also thought of it, they won't, they can only choose an easier way to steal and rob. Leonard threw the gold coin into the pile of gold coins, and heard the crisp sound of the gold coin and said, money is a good thing, but it is also a poison that corrupts people's hearts. Midgard grinned when he heard this, and Marcus on the side also looked very astonished. It was the first time he heard Leonard's high-spirited talk, and it was also the first time he realized how special Leonard was. The kid didn't look like an 11-year-old Hogwarts freshman at all. Then what do you think we should do? Midgard scratched her head in embarrassment. She had long been used to Leonard's maturity and asked naturally, I'm not as smart as you, so just tell me what you can do. Leonard rolled his eyes after hearing this, you can be a hands-off shopkeeper. Great people are always busier. Isn't that what you and Zig said? Midgard said with a sly smile, if you have any ideas, we will listen to you. Since you've said that, then I won't be polite. Leonard sat on the chair again, ready to start talking. With the experience of robbing Gringotts together, the relationship between Leonard and Midgard has risen from friends to companions or accomplices. Not to mention all prosperity and one loss, the expansion of the power of Midgard's subordinates is also beneficial to Leonard, so Leonard is also willing to advise Midgard, and while increasing the power of werewolf wizards, draw in each other, relation. The first thing to do is to find a way to free the werewolves under your command from the pain of losing their minds on the full moon night, and use this as a reward to recruit those wizards who are unwilling to surrender to the werewolf instinct. Leonard said. It's no different from what I said before, isn't it just to buy more raw materials for the wolfsbane potion and ask the potionist to help us make cheap wolfsbane potion? Midgard muttered. Leonard's eyelids twitched. Can this be the same? He rested his forehead with one hand, what we need is finished products. If we have the ability, why should we hand over the process from raw materials to finished products to others to make money? Can't we have our own potion master? Our own potion workshop? In order to draw in the relationship between himself and the werewolf wizard, Leonard specially used us, Midgard and Markarth didn't react, and perhaps they both naturally thought that Leonard was one of them. But training or recruiting a potion master is expensive. Midgard argued. Money, Leonard pointed at Garen under his feet, isn't the money here? Are you willing to distribute the money to werewolf wizards so that they can use it in various places, but you don't want to spend it on something that is really useful? Quote. In fact, Leonard wanted to say that you don't want to spend money on the blade, so you have to spend it on the handle, right? Midgard thought about it carefully, and it really made sense. It is indeed much more cost-effective to spend money on training a potion master than hoarding raw materials. The crafting cost of Wolfsbane potion is much more than that of galleons saved by hoarding raw materials. Then it's about the lives of werewolf wizards. Leonard said, it's definitely not good to send money. We have so much money now that we can buy a few shops and do a little business. It's best to buy a manor dedicated to growing Wolfbane potions, s material. These seem to cost money. How can we improve the lives of the little wolf cubs? Midgard asked. Shops need employees, manors need farmers, these are jobs. Leonard explained, werewolf wizards need work, not just money. Letting them create value is the beginning of a good cycle. Only then did Midgard suddenly realize, this method is very good, why didn't I think of it? Yes, why didn't I think of it? Leonard is also puzzled, it should be easy to think about work for relief, it's the end of the 20th century, and there are still people who don't understand this. Even if they don't know how to work for relief, an organization can't just support the idlers, can it? In the past, Fenner did all kinds of evil, but at least people regarded the werewolf as a younger brother playing the underworld. Although it is unstable and earns less, at least it can be regarded as active. Why doesn't Midgard understand, but wants to raise his subordinates as children? Forget it, if you don't understand it, you don't understand it, it's fine if he can't teach it. In short, money can't be given to anyone for free, and they should be exchanged for work or contribution. Leonard said, 
recruit some potion masters, and then select talented people from werewolf wizards, and subsidize them to learn potion making, especially wolves. Poison making. The manor provides materials, and the hired potion masters and learned werewolf wizards produce finished potions and then hand them over to the shops for sale. If Diagon Alley has scruples about werewolves, first hire a common wizard as the store manager to sell the finished products and materials. Leonard named the future of the werewolf wizard in a few words. In short, everything is easy to talk about if you have money. If you don't have money, you can't move an inch. Don't think about living on your laurels. We don't have a second chance to grab Gringotts, Leonard concluded. No, don't rush, if your plan works, we don't need to worry about money anymore. Midgard's eyes were full of fighting spirit, as if he had seen a bright future. It's good that you know. Leonard stood up, as for the potion master, you can go to Ziggs, he must know a lot of potion masters, and I think Damocles is very good, he sympathizes with werewolves and is short of money. Quote, as long as Midgard can do what Leonard said, it won't be long before there will be another force that is hard to ignore. It is not a force that makes people dreadful by fear and loathing, but a force that oppresses others by money and wealth. Understood, let's find a manner first, starting from the basics. Midgard looked at Marcus, who understood, turned and left the room. Although the status of werewolf wizards is not high, they are widely distributed. You can find out where there are manners for sale with a little inquiry. The shops are a bit troublesome. Werewolves will not be allowed to settle in Diagon Alley, let alone open shops. We can only open in Nocturne Alley first. Midgard is full of enthusiasm. The shops here are very troublesome to open, but once opened, the profits are huge. Nocturne Alley is synonymous with chaos and crime. Many people sell stolen goods or smuggle or sell illegal items here, and these are huge profits. As long as they can deal with the desperate dark wizards, the money earned is enough to make many pure blood families jealous. And werewolves are not afraid of those dark wizards who are willing to take risks. After all, for most wizards, contact with werewolves is itself a very dangerous thing. Leonard, thank you very much. Midgard stood in front of Leonard and gave him a solemn hug. You will always be our best friend. These are nothing. I'm just talking about it, the specific work is still up to you. Leonard gently pushed Midgard away, by the way, the full moon night of this month is coming soon, Wolfsbane potion is how much have you prepared? Not many, only Damocles is willing to brew us Wolfsbane potion at a low price, but with these gallons, there is no need to worry. Now that we know that we still have few potions, we can slowly hire those arrogant magicians in the future. Pharmacist. Midgard said excitedly. Then remember to raise the price for Damocles as well. We need to build a good relationship with him, and we'd better win him over. Leonard took out a bundle of potions from under his cloak as he spoke. This is the Chimajasma potion I made. It has failed many times. These are the two successes, but the quality of one time is not good. I think there will be some adverse reactions after drinking it. Leonard pointed to a few bottles with impurities in them and reminded. By the way, don't eat sugar after drinking the potion, it will make the potion invalid. Thank you. Midgard patted Leonard's shoulder emotionally. I thank God more than once for allowing me to meet you. You have given us great help. You don't need to be so polite between us, just remember to help me collect the magical plants. Leonard rolled his eyes and said. The more dangerous the better. Don't worry, I will definitely help you find it. Midgard smiled. Leonard nodded and was about to leave when he suddenly remembered the mysterious symbol of Jin Curry and hesitated for a while. What's wrong? Midgard asked. Leonard thought for a while and decided to tell Midgard, because he was not sure what was going on behind that door, danger or safety. He needs someone to help him share the risk, and with his friendship with Midgard and Midgard's character, even if there is any precious treasure behind the door, Midgard will not turn his face. Didn't I lose my mind for a while at Kim Curry? Leonard said. At that time I saw a mysterious symbol and a door. Mysterious symbols and doors. Midgard frowned. What do you mean? I want to go in and take a look. Leonard said bluntly. I don't recommend doing this. In fact, I think we should tell Gringotts about it and let them deal with it. Midgard said calmly. It represents danger, and you should not risk it. What Midgard said was true but that symbol and that door seemed to be related to the so-called ancient magic and the ancient buds on his body. Leonard really didn't want to give up. 
Judging from the knowledge gained after coming into contact with that symbol, it seems to be a kind of inheritance, but Leonard does not intend to tell Midgard this secret yet. I still want to take a look, Leonard said. Midgard was silent for a while and said, I respect your idea, but if you really want to go, remember to call me. Of course, I'm afraid of death, Leonard said with a smile, then when shall we go there? This, I'm afraid it will have to wait until next month, Midgard frowned. It's almost the night of the full moon. Even if I drink the wolfsbane potion during that time, I will become weak and I can't help you. And as the leader of the werewolf wizard, she couldn't leave at this time, she had to stay in charge the whole time to ensure the production and distribution of the wolf's poison potion. But school will start next month. Leonard frowned upon hearing this. Then take it easy, let's go and have a look at Christmas. Midgard patted Leonard's head, anyway, you have the portkey, don't you? I'll go to Hogwarts to find you then, let's go straight there. Putting it off until Christmas. Leonard was a little reconciled, but as Midgard said, even if she became a werewolf and kept her sanity by drinking the wolfsbane potion, she would not be able to help because of her weakness. Unless, unless Leonard can come up with an improved version of wolfsbane potion. Even if it doesn't completely cure the werewolf, it still needs to keep the werewolf sane while still maintaining its full state. But that thing has not even had a shadow yet. In any case, we must hurry up and study the improved version of Wolfsbane Potion. Leonard has no procrastination, and he always does what he says and does. After leaving Nocturne Alley, while the shop was still open, Leonard went to Giggs to buy a pot of aconite in bloom. The Econodum of the Wizarding World gave Leonard 50 experience points, and now Leonard's level has reached the middle level plant apprentice 341 500 and has passed halfway. September is the time when Econodum blooms, and the small purple flowers look quite charming. However, aconite is poisonous, so it is not suitable for potted plants. If it is further strengthened to increase the toxicity, it cannot be placed indoors. Although Leonard can gain the friendship of plants, he does not have the ability to be invulnerable to all poisons. After returning to the room of the leaky cauldron, Leonard opened the window for ventilation, placed the aconitum pot in the window and activated the ability of optimal growth and root strengthening. The soil in the flower pot was turbulent, and the roots covered with soil surged in the flower pot. The nutrients and water in the soil were extracted in large quantities, and the soil became grayish white and clumped in the blink of an eye. Leonard gained 50 experience again, 391 500 At the same time, the enhancement belonging to Econodum also appeared in front of Leonard. The first one is that the bright purple flowers of Econodum turn into white, which looks pure and harmless, and emits a strange fragrance to attract animals to come and eat. But this kind of strengthened Econodum has a lot of toxins, and even the flowers and leaves will explode, and a large amount of concentrated venom will be sprayed when bitten, and a large number of surrounding animals will die. A useless enhancement. Although this toxin is superb, Leonard's enhancement of Econodum is not for killing people. The second picture is a similar picture that Leonard has seen. Like the biting kale, it shows the scene of being boiled into a potion. Enhanced medicinal properties, this should be the result Leonard wanted. However, the third picture appeared soon, and the third picture was very special, showing a cross-sectional view of an Econodum growing in the ground. In the picture, as the plants grow, the rhizomes of the Econodum begin to degenerate, while the branches on the ground expand and grow. Over time, the stems of the Econodum wilt and eventually the swollen stem splits to reveal a purple thumb-sized fruit. The third picture shows something a little weird. Econodum is also known as Chimajasma. The whole plant is poisonous, the main medicinal part is the most poisonous rhizome, the processed main root is called Xuanwu, and the secondary root is called Aconite. This part is also needed for the Chimajasma potion, but the third enhancement has completely degraded the medicinal part, but suspicious overgrowth has appeared in the branches. Eventually, it is the plant that withers completely that forms a purple fruit. The rhizome has been absorbed, and the branches have grown excessively. Could it be that the medicinal power has been concentrated by the whole plant? Leonard became interested and chose the third enhancement. Even if the strengthening of this plant is useless, it is not difficult to buy a pot of Econodum, money is so willful. As the strengthening progressed, the root hairs of this mature Econodum plant, which had crowded the entire flowerpot due to the strengthening of the root system, began to shrink and degenerate. 
a large amount of nutrients and substances are concentrated towards the branches, and the plants quickly dry up. With a click, the branches crack, revealing a purple fruit. As the fruit took shape, a whole aconite shattered, allowing the purple fruit to fall into the pot. Leonard put on dragon leather gloves and picked up the fruit. The fruit felt tough through the dragon leather gloves, a bit like a half-ripe mango. Because of the toxicity of the aconitum, Leonard didn't dare to smell it. After playing with it for a while, he cut open the fruit with a knife, revealing the pale purple pulp and a few seeds. What would happen if this fruit was used as the raw material for the wolfsbane potion? Leonard looked at the fruit in his hand and fell into thought. It's worth looking into, but before that, the fruit must first be tested for toxicity. It's too late today, I can only wait for tomorrow. Early the next morning, Leonard put on his robes and was about to go out. When he got to the door, he happened to see Harry Potter coming out of the next room. It's just that this savior looks a bit uneasy, with a haggard face, heavy dark circles on his face, and a look of excessive indulgence. Hello, Leonard. Harry Potter showed a weary smile, as if he would pull it away at any moment, and Leonard looked a little scared, afraid that the savior would die next door to him. The last time the joke seemed to be too big, it seems that the child was forced. Ah, hello. Leonard looked at Harry Potter. Harry, how long have you been up? I sleep every day, but I'm a little nervous, and I can't sleep well, so I often get up to practice magic. Harry smiled enthusiastically, I've learned three magic spells, and I feel like I might not be expelled. I was careless, bringing out what Harry Potter feared the most to scare the other party, which probably scared his psychological shadow out. Leonard's eyelids twitched, defeated by the solid-eyed kid. I'm going to go down and have something to eat and come back and continue practicing magic. Harry Potter didn't seem to expect to get an answer from Leonard, and he planned to leave as he spoke. Wait, wait. Leonard covered his face and stopped Harry Potter, I'm planning to go to Diagon Alley, do you want to come together? He couldn't let him go on like this, in case Harry Potter was really forced to death because of his words, he was worried that Dumbledore would come over overnight and burn him, and the ashes would be thrown away. To Diagon Alley, Harry Potter looked dazed for a moment, no, I'm afraid I won't be able to keep up if I don't learn magic, and it will be bad if I get fired. But if you are so cold, I will be in trouble. Leonard coughed dryly, feeling like he was shooting himself in the foot. I think learning still requires a combination of work and rest, Leonard said earnestly, proper relaxation is conducive to better learning. Is that so? Harry Potter pondered for a while. Okay, I'll pack up. Are you going to buy anything in Diagon Alley? Ah, uh, Leonard thought for a while, I'm going to visit the Wonder Zoo. Magic Zoo is not a zoo but a store specializing in the sale of magical animals, located on the south side of Diagon Alley, closer to Nocturne Alley. Wonderful zoo, Harry Potter repeated, interested. He doesn't seem to have been there yet, which sounds interesting. Are you going to buy a pet? He asked. Ah, almost. Chapter 61 In order to prevent Harry Potter from sending him away, Leonard had no choice but to take Harry Potter to Diagon Alley together. Walking on the street with Harry Potter didn't feel like an exaggeration, not everyone ran to Harry Potter with strange noises to take a photo or ask for an autograph. In fact, almost no one noticed that this little boy was the savior who defeated Voldemort. And Harry Potter wasn't arrogant because of his fame, he was used to the feeling of not being taken seriously after living in his uncle's and aunt's house. At this time, he only felt very free and comfortable, especially after spending several days studying magic in the room day and night, he went out shopping with his friends. This feeling was so refreshing. The morning is the busiest time in Diagon Alley, and many shops are already open for business. And that's when Leonard's torment began. Look, Leonard, there is a place selling Quidditch supplies. I heard that Quidditch is the favorite sport of wizards. It's a candy store. I haven't been to a candy store here. Want to see it, Leonard? What is this store for? Ah, it stinks, ha. Huh. Leonard, is the owner greeting you? Shall we go in? Leonard, quote dot dot dot, Leonard, comma 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 comma. Leonard regretted it, he felt that he shouldn't have invited Harry Potter to visit Diagon Alley together, it was really noisy. Leonard could understand Harry Potter's enthusiasm. After all, Harry Potter had no friends since he was a child, which resulted in his habit of treating others as friends wholeheartedly when others treated him better. 
but fortunately, Harry Potter still had a sense of proportion. After Leonard clearly refused him to go to candy store, cold drink store, pharmacy and other places, he didn't mention it again, and he still happily followed Leonard all the way. This looks like the stupid son of the landlord's family. The two dawdled and walked for more than 20 minutes before passing through the downtown area of Diagon Alley to the shop selling magical animals. Before seeing the signboard of the magical zoo, the two of them smelled a bad smell. It smells really bad in here, said Harry Potter, holding his nose. The shops that sell animals are similar, Leonard said while looking at the shop. There are some magical animals displayed at the entrance of the shop, such as sea turtles with gems inlaid on their shells, huge orange snails, some unknown creatures like furry dolls, rabbits whose bodies are as elastic as rubber, and cats of various colors. There is a big mouse with gray-black. Leonard nodded when he saw the big mouse, quite satisfied. Harry Potter looked at the animals curiously, his fingers were about to move, as if he wanted to touch these strange-looking animals. Don't touch it, be careful it's poisonous. Leonard noticed the savior's little hand that had nowhere to rest and reminded. That's right, a man wearing a linen robe came out of the shop at this time. He looked about 30 or 40 years old, slightly fat, with a kind expression. Many magical animals are dangerous, so it is best not to touch those unfamiliar magical animals, even if they are friendly. Thanks for the reminder, Harry Potter said politely. You're welcome, the man smiled, his eyes suddenly fell on Harry Potter's face, the sudden change of expression gave Leonard a premonition. Sure enough, the man's expression became more exciting. Oh, Merlin's beard, you are Harry Potter. The man said excitedly and bowed slightly. It's an honor to meet you. I'm the owner of this shop, and my name is Burton Fillum. Hello, Mr. Fillum, I'm Harry Potter, and this is my friend Leonard Wilhelm, Harry Potter said. The two started a pleasant chat, which made Leonard, who was really planning to go shopping, hold his forehead helplessly. The title of savior is really troublesome. The boss, Philem, chatted with Harry Potter for a while before realizing that there was another person, and he nodded at Leonard embarrassedly, sorry, I was a little too excited, are you two here to buy magical animals as pets? It's Leonard who wants to buy something. Harry Potter said, looking at Leonard, what do you want to buy, Leonard? How do you sell the mice? Leonard asked pointing to a group of black mice in the cage. Are you going to buy a mouse? Harry Potter bent down and looked at the mice in the cage. Although the mice were clean, it was quite frightening to keep such harmful animals as pets. These mice are very healthy little fellows, 13 sickles each, but you are a friend of Harry Potter, I can give you a discount, 10 sickles. Flim said generously. Harry Potter was a little embarrassed when he said this, and he was about to say something thankful when he heard Leonard's calm voice, can I get a discount if I buy more? Buy more, how much do you want? Fellum asked suspiciously. Let's buy twelve first, Leonard thought for a while and said. Twelve rats were divided into three batches to make a rough control variable, one batch was used as a blank control, one batch was given common aconitum, and one batch was given enhanced aconitum fruit to compare the toxicity of enhanced aconitum fruit. Leonard, what do you want so many mice for? Harry Potter asked in surprise. Even if there were so many mice in a cage, his scalp felt numb. Leonard hadn't answered yet, but Flim over there answered. Oh, you plan to do potion experiments, right? You seem to be a very easy to learn little wizard. Phelim was not intimidated by the number. Wizards keep animals such as mice or toads for experimental potions, and few people really treat mice as pets. No, Leonard didn't like people guessing his thoughts. Actually, I plan to buy it to feed my owls. Compared with the dry mouse feed at the babbling owl store, I think the mice eat healthier. Ah, Phelan was stunned for a moment, and it took him a long time to hold back a sentence, sounds good. Feed the owl, Harry Potter immediately thought of his Hedwig. He seemed to be feeding his owl nuts all the time, which was not good. Then bring me ten too. Harry Potter said, I think I need to change my owls too. Okay then, Philem took the mouse out of the cage with a dazed expression, wondering for a moment whether he was selling animals or feed. After buying the mice, Leonard went to Ziggs to buy a new aconitum on the way back, and then returned to the leaky cauldron with the cage and Harry Potter. After saying goodbye to Harry Potter at the door of the room, Leonard put the rat aside and prepared to start his own experiments. As soon as he got back to the room, 
Leonard's owl, Gray, seemed to smell the smell of the mouse and was excitedly jumping around in the open cage. Leonard looked helplessly at the owl that was glowing with anticipation, pulled out a mouse from the cage and threw it into Gray's cage. The poor mouse uttered a, cheech, cry, and before it could stand still, it was grabbed by a powerful paw. Gray screamed twice excitedly, looking around at the struggling mouse, the beak chattered, and a long, chi, came from the cage. Then there was the sound of tearing. Gray began to enjoy the rare fresh blood, and Leonard put the three boxes of mice next to Gray and handed them over to him to take care of them. At Leonard's request, Philem used three cages to pack these mice, which was convenient he fed the mice different foods. After telling Gray not to eat the remaining mice, Leonard came to the window and put the newly bought aconitum on the table, and then began to make the extract. Seeing Leonard start operating the potion-making equipment on the table again, the ancient sprout hidden in Leonard's sleeve came out again. It looked at Leonard's movements curiously, watching him extract part of the root extract of normal aconitum and the extract of aconitum fruit. Then he took several bags of corn kernels presented by Phelim as mouse food, divided them into three parts, one part was soaked in pure extract, and the other two parts were soaked in aconitum extract and fortified aconitum fruit extract respectively. Leonard is also serious about doing experiments, and he will take any variables into account. Time slowly came to noon, Leonard took out the soaked corn kernels, marked them on three pieces of paper, pasted them on the cage, and poured the corn into the cage. Although the extract is fed with strong alcohol, these mice have been hungry all morning, and they have been hungry for a long time after being stared at by predators. They gobble up those corn kernels, and even fight with their companions to eat more corn kernels. Up. After a while, the corn was eaten, and the mice in the three cages fell into a dizzy state. At this time, it was caused by the alcohol in the extract, Leonard was not surprised, but stared at the pocket watch in his hand to see the mouse's reaction. The first thing to change was the number two cage soaked with the original aconitum extract. The drunken rats in the cage began to pull out their limbs within a minute after eating the corn, and their chests rose and fell weakly, and the speed was also very slow. This is typical alkaloid poisoning. Speaking of aconitum, the toxin of this thing was often painted on arrows in ancient China. Judging from Guan Yu's deeds of scraping bones to heal wounds, it is very likely that he was poisoned by this poison. Leonard just glanced at the poor rat in the cage and stopped paying attention. The rats in this cage are useless, and Leonard will throw them away after they die. It is impossible to feed them to Gray. Although it is easy to detoxify this animal poisoned by aconitum indirectly, Leonard remembers that only soybean juice and salt are needed. But it's not like he can't afford a mouse, so why take such a risk? Soon, the mice in the number one cage that had taken the pure extract came to life, and they only showed the appearance of a hangover, that is, they were drunk. The behavior of the mice in the third cage was a bit strange. They occasionally had convulsions, but their vitality did not seem to be affected. It seems that the toxicity of aconitum fruit has been weakened. Does this mean that commons rue is enough and no additional enhancement is needed? Leonard doesn't want to strengthen too many plants for the time being, because he can only carry these abnormal plants with him without a fixed planting point. If someone finds out the abnormality of these plants, he will be very passive. Time passed by every minute and every second, and about half an hour later, half of the mice in the number three cage were dead, and half of the mice were still alive. Although still weak, he appeared to be out of danger. The toxicity has really weakened, but I don't know how it will behave after brewing the potion. Leonard didn't care about the mice anymore, went downstairs to eat a little food, and came up to start brewing the potion. The ancient sprout is eager to try on Leonard's cuff, and it seems that it likes brewing potions. Leonard is naturally happy and leisurely, with his brain empty, and under the guidance of the ancient buds, he prepared the potion brainlessly. However, to Leonard's surprise, the Chimage Asba potion, which was supposed to be safe for ancient shoots, failed. The concoction in the crucible exploded suddenly, and the huge force destroyed the crucible. The concoction fell on the floor and emitted white smoke, while the pieces of the crucible shot in all directions like bullets. Gray let out a strange cry, raised his wings and hid behind Leonard's box, but the mouse in the cage was not so lucky, and screamed and fell down in the cage. Leonard, who was standing next to the crucible and bearing the brunt, was not injured. A layer of silver white light lit up on his body completely blocked the dangerous concoction and crucible fragments. 
Although the silver light dimmed slightly afterwards, Leonard felt after the magic power in the body flowed, the silver light returned to its original state. As the silver light dissipated, Leonard, who didn't understand, frowned slightly looking at the messy interior. Although failure is also reasonable, Leonard is a little helpless after experiencing failure. The ancient buds seem to have been hit too, and it hangs down with branches, like a child who has done something wrong. It's not your fault, it's a problem with the formula of the potion. Leonard touched the leaves on the buds and comforted him. Hearing that he was not to blame, the leaves on the tips of the ancient shoots suddenly froze, as if they were alive again. After comforting the ancient sprouts like children, Leonard took out his magic wand and gently waved, restore to original. As the sound of the spell sounded, everything in the room was returning to its original state. The walls and floors full of corrosion points recovered like growth, and the broken pieces of the crucible floated back obediently and bonded together to form a complete crucible. Save for the dangerous concoction in the cauldron and the poor rats killed by the concoction, in the blink of an eye the interior was back to its original state, even more renewed than before. This is the power of the great restoration charm. It's just that Leonard, who has done all this, is not proud, but is frowning and thinking about the mistakes. Sure enough, I still take it for granted. Leonard sighed and had to admit his biggest mistake. It was so stupid to think of using the previous potion formula when the main ingredients of the potion had changed dramatically, so stupid that Leonard didn't even want to admit that he made it himself. Although the fruit of aconitum also belongs to aconitum, it can be seen from the weakening of its toxicity that its medicinal properties have changed. He needed a potions master with more potions knowledge to figure out what to do with the aconitum fruit. As for the candidates, of course it was to find Damocles' bell. As a potion genius who developed Wolfsbane potion, no one knows more about Wolfsbane potion than Damocles' bell. If you want to modify Wolfsbane potion, without his help, even if Leonard has strengthened plants, he would not have the knowledge reserve. Handle strengthened material. Leonard had to admit that he had been too arrogant when he thought he was, most likely to create a cure for werewolf potions, which was not good. Before he really learned knowledge, he was just a kid who cut corners, and he needed to be in awe of knowledge. Thinking of this, Leonard didn't delay any longer, and left the leaky cauldron after taking the aconitum fruit. He doesn't know where Damocles' bell is now, but someone sure does. That is Ryan Giggs. Giggs was having lunch when Leonard arrived at Giggs' pharmacy. A piece of toast with smoked meat. I don't know how this guy ate bacon toast in the middle of a pile of smelly potion ingredients without changing his face. Leonard didn't have the habit of laughing at other people's recipes. As soon as he entered the door, he opened the door and said, I want to see Damocles' belby. Ha, huh, Ziggs who just took a bite of toast, raised his head and asked vaguely while chewing, what do you want him for? Leave it alone, it's urgent, Leonard said. But you are late, Giggs said unhurriedly, and took another bite of toast. Late, Leonard's heart suddenly turned cold, and his mind suddenly had a brainstorm, thinking that Damocles Belby might have offended someone and was killed. Or just got a huge sum of money and was too ostentatious to be killed and robbed. Just when Leonard was in a trance, Ziggs said unhurriedly, you are late, Damocles Bell has been hired by Midgar, you should go to Midgar find him there, not me. Leonard slapped his forehead, his heart was filled with anger, and he wanted to beat this slow-talking guy. Be careful when you speak next time, don't pause blindly. Leonard dropped a sentence with a dark face, turned and left Giggs' pharmacy. Giggs looked blankly at Leonard leaving without even understanding why Leonard was angry. Pause, what pause? Giggs thought for a long time but couldn't figure it out, and took another bite of the toast slowly. Although Leonard was a little impatient, he didn't lose his mind and go straight into Nocturne Alley, which would get him into trouble. He returned to the leaky cauldron, first wrote a letter to Midgar, and then waited until night before going to Nocturne Alley again. Still in the same old place, Leonard saw Marcus waiting here, and led him to another building. Compared with the dilapidated courtyard before, this building is much larger, and it doesn't have such an exaggerated war damage style, it looks like a normal house. At this time, the front of the house was full of medicinal smells, and werewolf wizards lined up in front of the house expectantly, waiting for something. Seeing the arrival of Marcus, these werewolf wizards greeted them warmly, even if they didn't get any response, they never got tired of it. As for Leonard, 
who was wearing a robe and a hood next to Marcus, although the werewolf wizards were curious, they didn't ask any questions. Although these werewolves were all under Midgar's subordinates, Leonard did not have the idea of exposing his appearance. He still remembered that there was a Dumbledore in the werewolf wizard group, a highly educated talent rarely seen among werewolf wizards, who came from Hogwarts graduated Remus John John Lupine. This Lupine was Harry Potter's defense against the dark arts professor in his third year. As the only werewolf wizard who graduated from Hogwarts under the influence of Dumbledore, Lupine is as grateful to Dumbledore as his reborn parents. Lupine is even willing to die for Dumbledore, and he can be called Dumbledore's number one, running dog. If Lupine saw his appearance, he would be in big trouble. Dumbledore would definitely be following him, which would be detrimental to his development. That's why Leonard puts on his hood every time he comes, and doesn't take it off until he's alone with Midgard. He also doesn't have to worry about Midgard talking about his appearance with his subordinates. Midgard is not stupid, she doesn't want Leonard to be labeled as a werewolf, which is not good for Leonard. Marcus led Leonard into the house through the side door. In a remote house, Leonard saw Midgard who was addicted to admiring the red wine-like wolfsbane potion. Next to it, several werewolf wizards walked in holding wolf poison potion. There seemed to be a lot of new faces recently. Leonard interrupted Midgard's intoxication. Midgard was awakened, saw Leonard and waved the other werewolf wizards to go out, turned his head and continued to look at the wolfsbane potion and said, of course, I am here to provide wolfsbane potion, those werewolves who don't want to hurt others will come I'm here, and even many werewolf wizards from abroad have come. The development is booming, and it won't be long before you can unify Nocturne Alley. Leonard laughed. I'm not interested in unifying Nocturne Alley, but if it can make the life of wolf cubs better, then I will definitely do it. Midgard put down the wolfbane potion in his hand, why are you here? There are only a few days left in Yuan Yi, and it is very dangerous here. Although the wolfsbane potion can prevent the werewolf wizard from being controlled by instinct, it cannot eliminate the toxin in the werewolf's claws and teeth, and it will be infected if it is accidentally touched. Midgard doesn't want Leonard to become a werewolf, because she knows how painful a werewolf is. I'm here to see Damocles' bell, is he with you? Leonard asked. Yes, right now he is making the wolfsbane potion. Midgard nodded, for the time being, we only found him willing to help us. I wanted to ask him for a favor, Leonard said. Help, Midgard frowned slightly. There is still a lot of gaps in the wolfbane potion. The few wolf cubs who are learning can't make the wolfbane potion independently, so he probably won't be able to do it. I'll cook the wolfbane potion, and he will help me research it. I have a hunch that if he can research something, the wolf's poison potion may have surprising changes. Leonard said seriously. When I saw Damocles again, the submissive potion master who had been negotiating was staring at the cauldron on the potion table with a serious face. Beside him stood a few clever werewolf wizards, holding their breath watching Damocles' operations. Attention, the color change of Wolfsbane potion is the key point. We must grasp the opportunity to put in materials every time the color changes, and remember that every three color changes need to change the temperature once. Damocles is explaining in detail the precautions for brewing the Wolfsbane potion. At this time, he no longer has the anxiety of being oppressed by Midgard before. At this time, his eyes are sharp, and his movements are clean and neat, showing a demon the magnanimity that a master of medicine should have. Sure enough, people in the neighborhood where they are good at will burst out with an aura that is hard to ignore. Midgard and Leonard didn't bother Damocles rashly, but said, Mr. Belby, when he was about to prepare the next Wolfsbane potion after he finished making the Wolfsbane potion. What's the matter? Damocles didn't stop his actions because of Midgard's voice, I still have a lot of Wolfsbane potions to finish, you shouldn't. The young werewolf wizard next to him was busy non-stop when Damocles brewed the Wolfsbane potion, bottling, processing materials, cleaning the crucible, and his actions were very skilled. It's about the Wolfsbane potion, Midgard said, we may need you to do some other things temporarily. Other things, Damocles raised his head and frowned. It's only two weeks before the full moon night, and the best time to take the Wolfsbane potion is one week before the full moon night. What could be better than that? Is Wolfsbane potion more important? There are other people on our side who can make Wolf's poison potion, but I'm afraid no one else can do this except you. Hearing Midgard's words, 
Damocles finally raised his head from the potion table, squinted his eyes at Midgard and Leonard beside her. This, seems to be the person who was with you during the negotiation that day, will he brew Wolf's poison? Damocles asked. Leonard didn't speak, he didn't want his voice to reveal his age. That's right, and he is the one who brought you good news, Midgard said, a piece of good news about an improved potion of Wolfsbane. DBBG improved Wolfsbane potion. Damocles' voice suddenly rose, this is impossible, how long did it take him to get the formula for Wolfsbane potion? It has nothing to do with time, Mr. Belby, said Midgard. Damocles choked for a moment and said, so what if there is a way to improve it? The Wolfbane potion is already yours, and it has nothing to do with me. I have no need or right to help you improve the potion. But we can hire you, can't we? Once the improvement is successful, we will pay you another 500 galleons. Midgard has brought out the power of money to make ghosts turn the millstone to the fullest. When it came up, Damocles was given an irresistible price. Damocles was stunned and muttered involuntarily, Are you werewolves so rich? This has nothing to do with you. Midgard took out the aconitum fruit that Leonard gave her. My people discovered a mysterious fruit produced from aconitum. It has strong medicinal properties and its toxicity has been weakened. My people tried to use your recipe to brew wolfsbane potion but failed. Aconite fruit. Damocles frowned, I've never heard of such a thing. He took the broken aconitum fruit, not seeing why, carefully pinched off a little bit of flesh with his fingernails and put it in his mouth. Immediately, his face turned livid at a speed visible to the naked eye, accompanied by a severe cough. He quickly took out a bottle of potion and poured it into his mouth, because it took more than ten seconds for his face to recover. Leonard looked dumbfounded, he really didn't expect Damocles to be so reckless, to taste the aconitum fruit directly with his mouth. You should know that this is aconitum. Although it is a strengthened plant with a lot less toxicity, it is also something with highly toxic alkaloids. This made Leonard have to admire the research spirit of Mr. Damocles, which is more than that of a half-hearted wolf. It's indeed aconitum, and the medicine is very powerful, but the toxicity is only one-third of the original. Damocles said while coughing, it's worth trying. I'm going to ask someone to open a new test site for you, and you can start the test immediately. Midgard summoned Markarth and asked him to arrange it, and then said, I will leave this to my people. Well, Anyway, your subordinates are going to drink the Wolfsbane potion, so you can rest assured. Damocles did not refuse, he was really curious about the effect of this Wolfsbane fruit, D can't wait to invest in research. Watching Damocles leave happily, Midgard glanced at the werewolf wizards who remained in the potion room and asked, Do you need help? Or should we drive them all out? They're supposed to be trustworthy, right? Leonard asked. His young voice startled the werewolf potion's apprentices. They always thought that this man was a dwarf, but they didn't expect it to be a young-sounding child. They are all trustworthy, and their mouths are strict, and they don't chew their tongues. Midgard gave a pertinent evaluation. Then stay here, I'll teach them the same thing with Wolfsbane Potion, Leonard said. He has brewed Wolfsbane Potion by himself, experienced failures and defective products, and understood all his mistakes with the help of ancient sprouts. It can be said that he has already known all the mistakes that are easy to make in brewing potions for reading aloud. Isn't it easy to teach a few apprentices? Then I'll leave this place to you. You can live here for the next few days. I'll let someone else bring you meals. Don't worry, I'll let these little wolf cubs bring you meals. Midgard understands Leonard's being cautious directly dispelled Leonard's concerns. Okay, but I'll go to the leaky cauldron to check out first and bring my luggage here, and when school starts, I'll leave directly from you," Leonard said. Midgard thought for a while and shook his head, no, it's too dangerous for you to live here, or forget it. It's okay, you have enough wolfbane potion, can you still protect me? It's settled. Leonard didn't give Midgard a chance to refute turning around and leaving the magic courtyard. Finally, he has a chance to avoid that annoying savior, and he will not let this chance go. In the days that followed, Leonard took over the potion room of the werewolf wizard, and with the help of the ancient sprouts, he brewed pots of wolfbane potions. At the same time, he also taught a group of werewolf wizard teenagers how to make wolfbane potion. As a student, he started teaching others before entering school. Leonard didn't feel that he was misleading his children, but he felt that he was a good teacher. 
In the potion room, a total of four potion tables are in full swing, and every time a period of time passes, the finished wolfbane potion will be sent to the side, then Marcus, who was guarded by the side, moved outside. These wolf poison potions will all be sent to the werewolves who need them. Because wolf's poison cannot be stored for a long time, the warehouse here only has some materials for wolf's poison. The werewolf teenagers who are working are all half a meter taller than Leonard, and the average age of these teenagers is only 15 or 16 years old. Because of their status as werewolves, they cannot go to any magic school, so they can only waste themselves in the alley. Youth. Their blood has not been cooled by the cold society, and they still have the enthusiasm to change themselves, so after learning that Midgard provides jobs and learning opportunities, they can't wait to join Midgard's command, and soon almost became Midgard's confidant. These young people are the best to control, as long as there is a grandiose slogan and a little practical benefit, they can go through fire and water without hesitation. Such a subordinate is a perfect match for Midgard. Anyway, Midgard doesn't like to use his brains, and he really wants to help werewolf wizards improve their living environment. Love houses and black people, but also the admiration for knowledgeable people makes these teenagers respect Leonard. After all, compared to Damocles who was too serious when brewing potions, Leonard is the real friend of Midgard. They don't even need wages to help them brew wolf's poison for free. More importantly, Leonard is more serious and useful than Damocles taught them. In just three days, three of these werewolf teenagers were able to brew wolfbane potion independently. Although the movements were still a bit stumbling, the quality of the finished product was not good, and there were still some chances of failure, but for most werewolf wizards for this, this is enough. And with the help of these werewolf teenagers, Leonard's work will not be very difficult. Mr. Wilhelm, the material you want. A werewolf boy handed the processed aconite to Leonard. Thank you. Leonard nodded, and at the right time, he added the aconite handed by the werewolf boy into the crucible, and said, Come on, Robert is watching carefully, and we need to withdraw part of the flames at this time, and then take the opportunity to add materials. Most of the werewolf teenagers learned the brewing method of Wolfsbane potion when Leonard was brewing the potion. Only this honest guy named Robert was busy moving things every day, and missed a lot of important points. Teach by hand. If Leonard hadn't insisted on keeping him by his side, he might have gone over there to help carry the wolf's poison. Okay, as the only student and assistant, Robert forced himself to focus on the cauldron in front of Leonard instead of the wolf poison that needed to be removed. Soon, Leonard cooked another pot of wolfbane, looking at the wine-like liquid in the cauldron, Leonard nodded with satisfaction and looked at Robert next to him, do you remember? Robert nodded and said, remember. Then bottling, let's make a pot next time. After Leonard threw the potion table to Robert, he left the potion room by himself, put on the hood, and went to the next room. In the room, Midgard was sitting idly on a chair, looking at the record of making Wolfsbane potion by an unknown wizard next to him. Most werewolf wizards are illiterate, because no magic school is willing to take them in, and it is impossible for them to go to a muggle school to study, so apart from their ability to speak, reading, writing and arithmetic are problematic. So is this wizard who is recording the quantity of Wolfsbane potion a common wizard hired by Midgard, or is it a different kind among werewolf wizards 10 werewolf wizards who can read and write? If it's the former, it's okay to say, but if it's the latter, you need to pay attention. Leonard frowned. He glanced at Midgard, gestured towards the door, and then walked out on his own. Midgard nodded calmly and said to the wizard beside him, Go ahead, I'll be back later. Good Ms. Gryberg. The wizard nodded and watched Midgard leave. Who was that person just now? It seemed that he had something to say to Midgard, but he stopped talking after seeing himself. The wizard thought for a while, but did not come up with a reason, TNGN shook his head and continued to work. It was hard for him to find this job. Not only was there a generous salary, but also Wolfsbane potion. He couldn't lose his job just because he was lazy. Leonard and Midgard came to another room, which was more secluded and no one would come here without Midgard's permission. Was that person just now a werewolf wizard? Leonard asked. That's all you're asking, Midgard said carelessly, that's right, a werewolf wizard. He's a nice guy, and he's quite pitiful. He was turned into a werewolf by my big brother. What's his name? Leonard asked. The surname seems to be Lupine, what's the name? 
Midgard thought for a while, it seems to be called Remus John. Remus John Lupine, is it really him? Leonard nodded, feeling relieved. This hidden character can be regarded as showing his face. People who hide in the dark will always make people afraid, but as long as he shows up actively, his danger is very low. I've heard of this person. Leonard said, he is a good friend with Harry Potter's father. He graduated from Hogwarts. He is a nice guy and very useful. But be careful, that person is probably from Dumbledore. Don't expose him to too many secrets. Secrets, do we have any secrets? Midgard asked blankly. Leonard couldn't help but raised his forehead and growled in a low voice, is it still a good thing for us to rob a bank? Ah, that's right, but I didn't intend to tell others about it. Midgard shrugged. I mean our development plan, our plot must not be disclosed to him. Leonard said sternly, you can use him. He is still very useful among the generally illiterate werewolf wizards, but you must not use him. As a confidant, your charisma is no match for Dumbledore. Although this sounds very unpleasant, I feel right. Midgard nodded. That's Dumbledore, how can I compare to him? She didn't ask how Leonard knew so many things about Lupin. Anyway, in her eyes, Leonard is very powerful, and it's normal to know some secret information. Like he knew Quirrell was going to rob Gringotts. Leonard sighed inwardly, feeling tired. When I first came into contact with Midgard, I only thought that this person was nice, bold and kind, and he was simply an outlier in Nocturne Alley. Now it seems that this heterogeneous element is even more terrifying, she doesn't seem very smart. It's not stupid, Midgard is not stupid, otherwise it would not be possible to gather a group of people to fight for it when it grows to such a large size in the Boundary Alley. Fools don't survive Nocturne Alley. It's just that Midgard has a kind of inertia, as if others don't need to think about her when she thinks about it. Such a personality is not good for a leader, and she is easily dismissed by her subordinates. Fortunately, she also has a loyal confidant, Marcus, and later met Leonard. However, if she hadn't met her, she might have been killed by Fenrir. As an important supporting role in Harry Potter, if there was no time traveler Leonard, he would undoubtedly integrate all werewolves to join Voldemort. But now, this will not happen, and the less intelligent Midgard has become the leader of the werewolf wizard. Leonard was tired and relieved to be the companion of this not-so-bright man. What is tiring is that it is very troublesome to communicate with her. What is gratifying is that such a person will not pretend to be smart, will obey the command and will not mess things up. If it weren't for this, Leonard wouldn't cooperate with Midgard. At most, he would regard her as a good old man who is willing to lend a helping hand, in return for a little bitter just as a channel to obtain magical plants. Don't want to now, Leonard has already stood on this boat of the werewolf wizard. What's going on with Damocles? After talking about Lupine's accident, Leonard asked about the business, there are still two days until the day of taking the wolfsbane potion. Is there any progress in improving his potion? The matter of Lupine can be discussed later, the current focus is on the improved Wolfbane Potion. The time for a werewolf to take Wolfbane Potion is the week before the full moon night. During this week, the werewolf will be in a weak state, and then turn into a werewolf to maintain sanity until the full moon night. I don't know, that guy is just in a daze, talking crazily all day long that no one can understand. Midgard shrugged. I haven't paid attention to it for the past few days, I just asked the wolf cub to give him food. The drinker, this guy, has been defecating in the potions room lately, it's disgusting. Haha, ha, what are you afraid of, he won't use those things as materials, right? Leonard laughed. Midgard looked disgusted, and said with a bitter face as if he had eaten yellow lotus, stop talking, you disgust me. Don't be disgusting, let's go take a look together and check the progress. Leonard said. The two left the potion room and walked towards Damocles' exclusive laboratory. It is said that the laboratory is actually a potion room, but it is more hidden underground. When Leonard and Midgard came to this laboratory, they were almost overwhelmed by the peculiar smell inside, which was really strong. But Damocles stared at the boiling cauldron on the table with a serious face as if he couldn't smell it. Seeing this scene, Leonard and Midgard looked at each other, with a hint of surprise flashing in their eyes. Looks like it's a play. The two watched Damocles' every move with bated breath, for fear of disturbing him by making noise. I saw Damocles putting various materials into the crucible while thinking. 
Compared with Common's Wolfbane Potion, this potion has more types of materials and more cumbersome operation. Watching Damocles flick his hands up and down, adding water and heating up, let alone Midgard, even Leonard looked confused. After the last ingredient was put in, Damocles began to stir the medicinal liquid in the crucible at a constant speed until all the ingredients inside were completely dissolved, forming a pot of silvery liquid. It's done, Damocles exclaimed excitedly, I finally know how to deal with the medicinal properties of the aconite fruit. Seeing the excitement of Damocles, Midgard asked excitedly, Mr. Belby, have you succeeded? Damocles was taken aback, and only then did he realize that two uninvited guests had broken into his potion room. It's you, Damocles breathed a sigh of relief. In principle, since this potion is successfully prepared, it should be completed, but it hasn't been tested yet, so I'm not sure. Do you still need to experiment? Leonard patted himself on the head, realizing that he was too anxious. It is normal to need experiments. If Damocles took this new potion and swore that it was a successful improvement of Wolfsbane potion, he should suspect that Damocles was plotting wrongdoing from time to time. But if experiments are needed, it means that Leonard's plan to explore the mysterious symbol and behind the door before school starts must be shelved. Is it really necessary to come after Christmas as Midgard said? Leonard was a little reconciled, but he didn't show it. However, Midgard obviously noticed Leonard's silence. Although Leonard was wearing a hood and couldn't see his expression clearly, Midgard was still aware of it. Leave the experiment to me. Midgard said, I will drink this bottle of potion the day after tomorrow, and lock me up with a chain on the night of the full moon. No, we don't know the toxicity of this potion yet. Leonard subconsciously stopped. Midgard put his big hand on Leonard's head and rubbed it with a smile, don't worry, werewolves are not that fragile. Then she leaned closer to Leonard's ear and whispered, if the potion works, and I'm not the one who drank it, will you rest assured that a werewolf you don't know will accompany you on your adventure? Exploring there is my private matter, and it's my own willfulness to explore in advance. You shouldn't take risks because of my willfulness, Leonard whispered. Ha, didn't you risk your life to accompany me on the adventure? Whether it was when facing Fenrir or when going to Gringotts. Midgard stood up and said loudly, I'm not a villain who just wants to take. You should let me take some risks for you. Looking at Midgard's hearty smiling face, Leonard sighed. Well, since it's your choice. Two days later, the werewolf wizard's original stronghold, that is, the house with the yard. Leonard, Marcus, and Midgard sat around the yard, staring at the silver potion in the middle as if facing a formidable enemy. The distribution of Wolfsbane potion has been completed, and all the werewolves in the area of Nocturne Alley have obtained their own bottle of Wolfsbane potion. Now they live in groups of three around the courtyard. This is Leonard's opinion. Although no one would think about provoking a werewolf on the night of the full moon, even if it is a werewolf who has taken the wolf's poison potion, after all, this period is a period of weakness for werewolves. In order to prevent someone from taking the risk, a group of three, not far from each other, can take care of each other at any time without fear of danger. Even during this period of weakness, there will be werewolf wizards patrolling nearby. The surrounding houses have been bought by Midgard, and they belong to the werewolf wizard's own territory. Any wizard who wants to approach will be warned. So in theory, it is very safe to be located in the center of the werewolf wizard's territory, but the werewolf Marcus is very nervous. Because their werewolf wizard leader wants to test the medicine himself. Although Marcus wanted to do this instead of Midgard, Midgard sternly refused. If something really happens to me when I drink this potion, Marcus, you will listen to Leonard from now on, understand. Before drinking the potion, Midgard said to Markarth seriously, do you understand what I said? He will be your leader from now on. How could a common wizard become the leader of a werewolf wizard? Not to mention whether the other party is willing or not, the werewolf wizards would not be willing either. Marcus felt that he could only control himself, he believed in Leonard's personality, but the other werewolf wizards hadn't even seen Leonard's appearance. Such words that violated common sense spit out from Midgard's mouth, and Marcus was not the slightest bit surprised. He believed that the clever Mr. Leonard must also know that this matter was unreliable, but neither of them pointed out the problem. It was pure nonsense before Midgard tested the medicine. But before Midgard took the medicine, Leonard looked at Markarth. Keep an eye on Damocles' bell. Leonard urged, 
whether Midgard has any adverse reactions after drinking the medicine, keep an eye on him. We can satisfy all his requirements, but he is not allowed to leave our power, Scope. Marcus nodded, he knew it without Leonard talking about it, if something happened to his leader, he would definitely cut off Damocles' head. Don't make it look like I'm dead, okay. Midgard couldn't laugh or cry. Didn't Mr. Belby do a toxicity test? You must not have the intention to harm others, and you must have the intention to guard against others. Leonard subconsciously uttered an idiom he was familiar with, and after he finished speaking, he realized that the two werewolves present probably didn't understand it, so he paused and continued, in short, no matter what whether you have anything to do, Damocles will keep an eye on it. Okay, let Marcus arrange this kind of thing. Midgard waved his hand and picked up the potion in front of him, looked at it and said, hey, this potion is very special, maybe it can directly cure where's the good werewolf. Don't dream, Damocles said, the problem of werewolves is still magic in the final analysis, even the improved wolfbane potion can't cure the problem of werewolves. Leonard interrupted Midgard's fantasy mercilessly, stop thinking about it. Tisk, can't you let me fantasize for a while? Midgard pouted, and drank the silver potion without any hesitation. After taking the potion, both Leonard and Marcus became tense, staring at Midgard, hoping to discover the abnormality in Midgard in time. If it is found that Midgard is poisoned, it can be treated in time, induce vomiting or poor rue essence, so that even if the improved bottle of Wolfsbane potion is highly poisonous, there is a great chance to save the life of a dog in Midgard. Fortunately, there was no abnormality in Midgard. She just frowned after drinking the potion, and said with disgust, it's really bad. How does it feel? Leonard asked. I don't feel anything, it's just bitter. Midgard shook his head. No feeling of weakness. Leonard asked again. No, the body doesn't seem to be affected. Midgard moved a bit to confirm his state. Leonard nodded in relief. From the current situation, everything is fine. It seems that the preparations of myself and Marcus were in vain, but it is a good thing that there are no accidents. As for the prepared rue essence, it should be regarded as a reserve medicine, and an organization should have preparations so that it will not be wasted. That's half the battle. Then it's time for the night of the full moon. Midgard stretched and stood up. I'm relaxed, I want to go out for a stroll. You think too much, Leonard said mercilessly. He took out his pocket watch and a stack of papers, took out a bottle of ink and a quill, and put them on the table. Then there will be a period of observation. Leonard said, as the only werewolf who drank the potion, you are the only experimental subject, I must keep a record of your condition. Ah, Mr. Belby doesn't seem to have said such a thing. Midgard asked suspiciously. He's a potionist who knows shit about scientific experiments. Leonard rolled his eyes, it's okay to be careful anyway. So Midgard began a week-long life of observation. At first, Midgard didn't think there was anything wrong, but soon she found that Leonard's attention was too detailed, and there were even many prohibited items. I drank 700 milliliters more water today than yesterday, is it obvious that I am thirsty? Ah, uh, no, I just felt bored and drank two more glasses of water. I've eaten a little less, don't you have an appetite? No, I've been a little less active recently, so I'm not very hungry. You can't drink beer, and you can't drink all alcohol. Some sugar may remain in the alcoholic fermentation process, even if there is no sweetness. Ah, sorry, I almost forgot. About how many times you went to the bathroom today. Leonard, you are enough. In the end, under the strong opposition of Midgard, this observation report came to an end, but from the performance of Midgard in all aspects, Damocles' new potion did not have obvious side effects. But the absence of side effects does not mean that the potion is successful, and the final decision on the effect of the potion depends on the performance of Midgard on the night of the full moon. Soon, the night of the full moon came. At dusk, the werewolf boys who followed Leonard to learn how to make Wolfbane potion and Marcus came to the yard, waiting with Leonard for the arrival of the full moon night. Their faces were all pale, and the effects of the Wolfsbane potion suppressed their emotional and physical functions, ensuring that they would not lose their minds when they were wolfized. These are trustworthy people, they will protect Leonard at critical moments, so that he will not be hurt by Midgard who may go berserk. At this time, Midgard was locked by the thick chains of the arms, and sat quietly on the ground, waiting for the moon to rise. Actually, you don't need to be here. Midgard looked at Leonard and said, 
if it succeeds, I will let you know, but if it doesn't, it's dangerous for you to stay here, and the little wolf cubs may not be able to stop it hold me. Don't think I'm so weak, you'd better pray that the potion will work, otherwise you will be beaten badly by me. Leonard replied holding his wand. Cut. Midgard curled his lips in disdain, is it just your small body? Leonard didn't argue, just looked up at the setting sun that was about to set in the distance. As the sun sinks, the light is gradually blocked by the building, and at the same time, a full moon rises from the east. Ah, a wolf howl suddenly came, starting the process of werewolf transformation. Almost at the same time, the werewolf boy beside him, Marcus, and Midgard who was chained up were stunned, their body muscles swelled, their faces were elongated, and frantic hair came out of their pores. Leonard took a step back subconsciously, this collective transformation made him feel out of place. Soon, the room was full of tall, fluffy werewolves, and they looked at each other with surprise in their eyes. They really haven't lost their minds. Don't rush to be happy, look at Midgard first. Leonard reminded those werewolves who had apparently forgotten their business, and pointed to Midgard, whose head was lowered in an unknown state. Marcus was the first to react, he approached Midgard carefully, and patted her on the shoulder. The good werewolf incarnation of Midgard suddenly raised his head, his pale gold eyes were full of calm. There's nothing wrong with that potion, she moved her palm and said, help me untie the chain. Marcus heaved a sigh of relief when he saw this, and quickly called other werewolves to help unlock Midgard. After getting rid of the shackles of the chain, Midgard stood up. Originally, she was more than two meters tall, but after being transformed into a werewolf, she was almost three meters tall, with hard muscles and sharp claws. It looks stronger than other werewolves. Point. The body is very comfortable, without any signs of weakness. Midgard grinned at Leonard, showing a mouthful of fangs. It's a pity that I can't control the transformation, and I can't change back. You need to be content. Leonard threw an oversized robe to Midgard, cover your fur, let's go. Okay, Midgard stretched his muscles and put on his robe, let me accompany you on a journey. At night, Midgard wrapped herself tightly in a robe, making her look like a mysterious strong man instead of a transformed werewolf. After getting ready, Midgard pressed Leonard's shoulder and watched Leonard take out the exquisite portkey from the elegant box. Have you experienced portkey travel or apparition? Midgard asked suddenly before Leonard's hand touched the portkey. No, as soon as Leonard's voice fell, he felt a little regretful, because his hand had already touched the portkey. And he just remembered that portkey travel is not a comfortable thing. The portkey did not give Leonard a chance to repent. The moment he touched the portkey, a force from the inside out swept out from the portkey, dragging Leonard and the Midgard package into a certain place. Unknown channel. Leonard only felt as if he was being sucked into the toilet, and his whole body was spinning around at high speed. Surrounded by distorted pictures of Lu Li, Leonard is like a fish being dragged away by a hook, in pain and involuntary. Suddenly the light flickered in front of him, and he fell down to earth. Leonard, who was dizzy, shook his head to wake himself up, and only then did he realize that he had appeared in the back of the tenth ring. The hall is the goblin's favorite resplendent style, with golden colors everywhere. In the middle of the hall is a goblin sitting behind a counter with a similar style to the hall. He is wearing the uniform of Gringotts and is taking a nap behind the counter. Hum, it feels okay, the quality of Gringotts portkeys is not bad. Midgard's voice came with a husky voice. If this is all right, it's hard for me to imagine what it would be like to travel with a wizard's portkey. Leonard, who was suppressing the nausea in his heart, asked in disbelief. Let me tell you this, more than half of the people who use the door key for the first time will faint and need to go to the hospital for treatment. Midgard said. Then why didn't you remind me? Leonard rolled his eyes. I forgot, I thought you would ask me first according to your vigilant style. Midgard said innocently. I forgot too. Leonard helped his forehead helplessly. He did forget, because the portkey was not dangerous, so he ignored the adverse reaction of the portkey. Midgard patted Leonard on the back as a brief consolation and said, Don't waste time, my werewolf transformation will be lifted after tonight. I'm very powerful at this time, but I can't help it transform when there is no moon. Understood, but the werewolf may not be a curse at all, as you have seen, if the werewolf wizard remains sane, he is very powerful. Leonard said, 
glancing at the tall Midgard. If you can turn into a werewolf or a human anytime, anywhere, it's really powerful as you said. It's like a super powerful Annie Magus. Midgard sighed, but we're not. There is always a solution, maybe as Damocles said, the solution to werewolves is in magic. Leonard straightened his clothes, now, don't think so much. Come with me, quote. Leonard led Midgard up to the dozing elf. Midgard raised his paw, knocked on the counter, and quickly hid himself. Ha, huh, sorry, Gringott serves you as a distinguished guest. The goblin subconsciously read out his script clearly and accurately before he woke up. Startled, before noticing Leonard. Leonard looked more like his guest than the muscular Midgard. Please show me your portkey, the goblin said to Leonard. The portkey made by Gringotts does not return this function, and when it reaches its destination, it becomes a common key. Leonard took out the key and handed it to the other party, watched him record the number on the key, and then returned it to Leonard. Vault number 12, please come with me. The goblin jumped down, took Leonard and Midgard down to the vault track and got on the pulley. This time the pulley only advanced for 13 minutes, and it seemed that the hall just now was located somewhere underground. Leonard never thought of robbing Gringotts again. Counting time is just a subconscious behavior. After the tackle slowly stopped, the group arrived in front of the number 12 vault. The goblin stepped forward, opened the vault with magic, turned to the two and said, Dear guests, I will wait for you at the door. N. Leonard responded, leading Midgard into the room. Kim Curry's appearance and furnishings are exactly the same as when the two left last time. Scattered gold coins were piled all over the floor, making it almost impossible to get down. But this time the two of them didn't come for cannon, let alone this was Leonard's own cannon. Leonard didn't look sideways, and Midgard didn't even glance at it. Coming to the wall, Midgard looked at the wall curiously, but he didn't see anything special about it anyway. Leonard, did you see it wrong before? Midgard put his hand on the wall, where are their doors and mysterious symbols here? I'm not so bored, I took so much effort to bring you in for shopping on the night of the full moon. Leonard reached out to touch the wall and shared the vision with the ancient sprouts. The surrounding magical colors were displayed in front of Leonard's eyes, and the silver mysterious symbol and a door gradually appeared on the wall in front of him. Hold my shoulders, Leonard said to Midgard. Although Midgard was puzzled, he still put his hand on Leonard. Leonard was worried that this door was just a symbolic door, but in fact it was just a special door key, so he asked Midgard to put his hand on him. This is just in case, in case this is really a port key, then Leonard was transferred, how embarrassing would it be to leave Midgard behind? She couldn't see the door and the symbols on it. After confirming that Midgard was holding tight, Leonard put his hands on the two doors and tried to push the door. Under the cuffs, the swaying ancient buds bloomed with light, and the silver light lines wrapped around Leonard's arms seemed to circulate with Leonard. As the loop builds, Leonard suddenly feels the door loosen. Accompanied by the illusory creaking sound, a mysterious door slowly opened, and a dazzling light came out from the gap of the door. This is Leonard's perspective, but in Midgard's perspective, Leonard's arm suddenly sank into the wall, and his whole body was about to sink into the wall. She quickly grabbed good money Leonard's arm, trying to pull him out, but she didn't expect that when her hand touched the wall, she immediately felt a strong suction force, bringing her in. Leonard threw himself into it uncontrollably. The light dissipated, Leonard opened his eyes first, and was shocked by the scene in front of him as soon as he opened his eyes. The first thing that caught his eye was a huge hall. Leonard hadn't withdrawn from his magic field of vision. In front of his eyes, he saw countless silver light spots floating in the hall like elves. Wandering in, the surrounding walls are engraved with mysterious patterns, and the pillars supporting the queen are covered with stone carvings of many magical animals. This is a very classic ancient British style building with a strong church color. Except for those mysterious patterns on the walls, every detail is reflected in curved shapes. With its artistic beauty, this building will definitely drive many archaeologists crazy. It's a pity that this is not a muggle church, but a building belonging to wizards. Even Leonard, who has no interest in history, has an idea to find out. What is this place? Midgard's voice sounded behind Leonard. Midgard scratched his head and asked. It seems to be a ruin, be careful, there might be some kind of trap here. Leonard looked around and said. 
The most conspicuous thing is the huge modeled statue in the center of the hall, kneeling on one knee and leaning on a long sword. The heavy history has weathered its shell and made it covered with plants. It was supposed to be a very artistic statue, but when Leonard's eyes fell on the statue, he couldn't help shivering. There seemed to be something wrong with the statue. In the magic field of vision, a large number of silver light spots converged on the statue. This abnormal behavior instantly caught Leonard's attention. Watch out for that statue! Leonard yelled. What? Midgard froze for a moment, and suddenly the ground began to tremble, and the ancient building shook and dropped a lot of dust. Under the shocked gazes of Midgard and Leonard, the huge statue of a knight at least 30 meters high leaned on his long sword and slowly stood up. The huge knight statue stood up slowly, and the gravel and dust on its body were shaken off, and the smog was like a giant spirit in mythology standing on top of the sky. The giant sword that was inserted into the ground was picked up by it, and as the giant sword was pulled away, the cracks left on the ground widened, and cobweb-like cracks snaked forward on the floor. Under the control of the knight statue, the great sword pointed at Leonard and Midgard, and the powerful force made the whole hall tremble. Looking at the huge stone statue, Midgard gasped, what kind of monster is this? No one explained, the stone statue slowly raised the giant sword in its hand above its head, and without any warning, the stone sword moved towards the heads of the two of them. Leonard saw that he was in a hurry, and quickly shouted, don't be stupid, run. Is this the time to sigh in a daze? If you don't run, you will be turned into me, Leonard doesn't want to die. As he spoke, he threw out two seeds of biting cabbage. The seeds took root, and instantly grew into mature biting cabbage, bouncing towards the stone statue. However, the stone statue just moved its feet, and the huge impact tore the biting cabbage into shredded cabbage all over the ground, and the falling giant sword did not slow down at all. Midgard woke up like a dream, and immediately grabbed Leonard and jumped aside, avoiding the frontal crush of the huge stone sword. However, the huge stone sword hit the ground and immediately caused a terrible shock. The floor of the hall cracked, smoke and dust rose everywhere, and broken stones splashed like bullets, and a crack extended more than 10 meters away. Although the stone sword would not be too sharp because of its size, the strong wind pressure and huge size both showed that it was not a weapon that could kill enemies by its sharpness. Nothing can hold this thing for a while, just that huge force and weight can defeat all enemies. Although the stone sword is not too sharp because of its size, it can be used with strong wind pressure and huge volume. It all shows that this is not a weapon that kills the enemy by sharpness. Nothing can hold this thing at once, just that huge force and weight can defeat all enemies. Iron Armor Protection Leonard, who was protected by Midgard, raised his wand and blocked in front of the two with a light blue magic shield. One by one, which was as powerful as a small caliber bullet, hit it at any time and smashed into a pile of dust, causing ripples on the shield. Midgard, who was about to bear the impact, breathed a sigh of relief, but heard Leonard shouting in her ear, don't be dazed, the attack is coming again. The mighty blow just now is not a big move that needs to be cooled down after a while, it is just a casual blow from the huge knight statue. Missing, the stone statue once again raised its own sword and threw it at Leonard and Midgard mercilessly. Midgard is not superstitious about Leonard's iron armor curse, hugging Leonard as a roll. Another huge crack appeared on the floor of the hall, and the whole building was crumbling under this attack, as if it would collapse at any moment. We can't run anymore, running alone is useless, we have to fight back. Leonard shouted loudly, this building won't last long, we'll be buried alive if we hide like this. Put such a big guy in this building, don't you know how to make the house stronger? Midgard yelled. Don't forget what the goblin who brought us to the vault said before. This is a vault of the same age as Gringotts. It is a relic left hundreds or even nearly a thousand years ago. No amount of powerful magic can last this long. Then what's the matter with this big guy? Can't someone let it in after being idle? Midgard dodged the attack of the stone statue of the night again, watching a crack running along the wall to the roof, and a huge boulder facing her the direction where he was standing fell, his face turned pale, and Leonard rolled over again. But tumbling in the real world is not a game, and you can get stuck with an invincible frame. The flying gravel tore through Midgard's robe and hit her back with a muffled sound. Midgard grinned and let out a low growl, but still held Leonard in his arms. This kind of magic used for guarding and the magic of supporting the building are not the same concept. 
The magic supporting the building has been passively consumed, and the stone statue guarding here will only be activated when someone invades. Leonard took out a white fresh essence and smashed it on Midgard's back. At this time, he didn't care about the waves and wasted it. A little injury might deform Midgard's movements. At that time, both of them had to die. Anyway, you're right, you can't run anymore. Feeling the coolness coming from behind, Midgard grinned, and tumbling dexterously to avoid more than 10 meters, sword. Disarm you. There is no need to aim at all, even if you shoot with your eyes closed, you can't miss it. A thumb-thick beam of magic power hit the giant sword in the stone statue's hand, but the magic power exploded and the stone sword remained motionless. It's useless. Midgard was stunned for a moment and turned to Leonard and said, let's run and leave this ruin. There is no exit at all at the entrance. Leonard couldn't help but swear, it seems that I was wrong this time, I shouldn't have come in. It's useless to say this now, let's think about what to do first. My magic doesn't seem to work. Midgard said. How could your magic work on such a big stone statue? Look at mine. Leonard pointed his wand at the stone statue, and the gust of magic power blowing his hair. Disarm you. At this moment Leonard felt the excitement of the wand, it was fully helping Leonard gather the magic power to form a powerful magic. A huge ball of magic light condensed from the front of Leonard's wand, and its volume was even larger than Leonard's entire body. The huge magic power made Leonard's arms tremble a little and it was even uncontrollable, but it was this violent and huge magic power that made Leonard full of confidence. This super-strengthened version of the disarming curse might be able to level a mountain. Midgard opened his mouth involuntarily, seeing Leonard's powerful magic was even more shocking than seeing the huge stone statue move. At this moment, the stone statue raised its huge stone sword again. It didn't have any thinking, only mechanical means of attack. This is exactly what Leonard wanted, and only this kind of slow-moving and mechanized enemy could allow him to have the opportunity to charge up and use this powerful magic. Otherwise, a normal wizard can interrupt Leonard's energy storage with a stun spell. Of course, if facing a normal wizard, Leonard doesn't need to use such troublesome power storage at all, and a simple powerful spell can educate the other party. Seeing the stone statue slashing down the giant sword, Leonard smiled confidently and threw out the terrifying magic ball. The battle is over. Leonard put away his wand with a confident face. Then he started urging Midgard to run. Regardless of the effect of the magic, it is the most stupid idea to stand still and watch the collision between the magic and the giant sword. If the magic is effective, then the sword will definitely spin and fly towards Leonard and Midgard. The power of that thing is even stronger than the power of the stone statue wielding a giant sword, he would only stand where he is crazy. Leonard lay on Midgard's back, watching the magic and the giant sword collide, thinking that it would produce a huge sound and impact, but to Leonard's surprise, a silver streak suddenly flashed on the giant sword white light. The next moment, the energy-enhanced disarming curse that Leonard placed high hopes on was split in half so easily, the magic instantly collapsed and the minister's sword fell to the ground without any influence. Another huge gap extended to the wall, almost connecting with the gap next door. The wall was crumbling, and just as crumbling as the wall was Leonard's confidence. Leonard swears in his heart, and his eyes are fixed on the giant sword as if he wants to see the flowers. Something is wrong, something is wrong with that giant sword. Leonard has not dispelled the magic vision. In his eyes, he noticed that the moment the stone statue broke the magic, a strong silver light erupted from the body to the giant sword. It is this light that prevents the enhanced effect of the disarming curse from happening. That silver light, is it ancient magic? Leonard had a guess in his heart. But how to deal with ancient magic? With ancient magic? Leonard thinks it's very likely. According to his guess, this relic is likely to be a relic with the goal of inheritance, and it is impossible to make a deadly game for the successor to die. The silver light on this stone statue seems to be immune to all magical powers, so as a trial, the so-called ancient magic may have a very effective effect on this stone statue. It's like a game character has unlocked a skill. In order for players to understand this skill as soon as possible, they will arrange hostile targets that have strong immunity to other skills but are vulnerable before the new skill. This stone statue, DBAB, is likely to be this, fragile, hostile target. We need to do another experiment to confirm the guess. Leonard thought for a while and said to Midgard, try to attack the opponent with other curses. Can it work? 
Those magics are useless against large-scale targets, it's better to disarm the spell. Although Midgard said doubtful words on his mouth, the movements in his hands did not hesitate at all. Thunderbolt explosion, fire, flying sand and rolling stones. One curse after another hit the stone statue, but without exception, it did not have any effect on the stone statue. Instead, it removed a lot of plants on the stone statue's body, making it look much cleaner. Midgard Professional Gua Sha Gryberg. It's useless. Midgard deftly avoided another attack from the stone statue and shouted helplessly. Although there is still a burden, Leonard hanging on his body, Midgard does not have any fatigue. For a werewolf in its heyday, Leonard is not even considered a burden, but only a pendant. If it weren't for the fact that the relic hall couldn't hold up, Midgard could play with this stone statue all night. I know. The silver light in Leonard's eyes flickered, he observed carefully, every ten spells in Midgard will make the silver light light up slightly to eliminate the effect of the magic. Not offsetting, but directly eliminating, which directly dispelled Leonard's idea of using magic to consume the stone statue. Normal magic won't work, Midgard. Attract that statue's attention so I can cast a spell. Leonard yelled, put me down. Are you sure? Midgard asked. Okay, that's the only way we can go, Leonard said. That's good. Midgard stopped, and threw Leonard in the opposite direction the moment the giant sword fell, while tearing off the clothes on his body, revealing the furry but not cute werewolf body, approached the stone statue with an S-shaped path. Leonard is not a fragile child either. The constitution strengthened by the ancient shoots and Midgard used soft force when throwing him, so Leonard fell to the ground very easily. On the other side, Midgard, who was approaching quickly, made the stone statue shoot again and again, from the original slashing and slashing to stabbing again and again. Although the area of damage was much smaller, the power did not attenuate in any way. Every stab would bring up large swaths of smoke, dust and gravel, covering most of the battlefield in a short while. Leonard watched the smoke and dust appear and disappear, and the sharp and fierce Midgard's eyelids twitched, and he shouted, don't get too close. If you get too close, it may activate the third attack mode of the stone statue, stomping. Those few biting kale were the end. A girl stomping her feet is cute, a man stomping her feet is a pussy, and a stone statue stomping her feet is a destructive means of attack. Of course, if a girl is 30 meters tall, she can also turn cute stomping into an offensive method. In the smoke and dust, Midgard suddenly showed his head, gestured to Leonard that there was no problem, and then hid in the smoke and dust while the stone statue was attacking. Seeing Midgard's ease, there should be no need to worry about her for the time being. Leonard let out a long sigh of relief, and touched the ancient buds in his cuffs. It's up to you whether you can leave alive now, Leonard said softly. The ancient buds shook their leaves and nodded towards Leonard. Leonard closed his eyes and began to remember the magic that appeared in his memory. That magic is very special, it covers a wide range, is powerful, and requires time to accumulate power and gather time. Because the scope is too large, Leonard has no chance to practice, and now he can only see if he can use this magic with the help of the ancient sprouts. The silver brilliance on the ancient buds shone, and the silver light spread from its branches and leaves to Leonard's body. Leonard's skin was gradually covered with a layer of silver light, and when he opened his eyes, his eyes were already covered with silver light. There are no mysterious spells, and no special means of casting spells. Leonard slowly raised and retracted, controlling the flow of magic in his body according to the memory in his mind. A thin layer of gray mist suddenly appeared in the huge relic hall, and the mist condensed in the air, finally forming a dark cloud on the crumbling roof. The atmosphere in the Hall of the Ruins became extremely solemn, and the astonishing aura emanating from the clouds made people feel tight in the chest and panting. Boom! A silver thunder fell from the sky and landed on the ground, the floor exploded, and pieces of rubble flew up in the air, stained with silver flames and burned to the ground. This thunder and lightning seemed to be a signal, and the sky filled with thunder surged down. As the tallest and largest stone statue present, it bears the brunt of being surrounded by countless thunderbolts. The electric current formed by the silver magic power flows on the surface of the stone statue, quickly offsetting the silver brilliance inside the stone statue. This slowed down the movement of the stone statue, and the frequency of the giant swords falling also attenuated accordingly. Quick, Midgard, get out of that area! Leonard shouted, struggling to control the wand in his hand. 
Under such a powerful flow of magic power, this high imitation old magic wand reliably guides the gathering of magic power without any effort. On the contrary, Leonard, who controlled the magic power, couldn't bear it anymore, and the hand holding the wand trembled slightly. The magic has not been officially released, and those dense razors are just an appetizer. Midgard, who was within the range of the thunder, had long felt chest tightness and shortness of breath. After hearing Leonard's voice, he retreated violently without hesitation, dodging the thunder that discriminates between friend and foe, and left the range of the minefield. But the stone statue was not so dexterous, it seemed that it was difficult to even raise its hand under the bombardment of dense thunder. Seeing this scene, Leonard's eyes lit up, he waved his wand, and the scattered magic power in the dark cloud condensed into a point, turning into a thunderbolt and falling towards the stone statue. It's done. Seeing that the overall situation was settled, Leonard couldn't help shouting. However, just as the inevitable blow was about to land on the top of the stone statue, the originally slow-moving stone statue erupted in silver. The sudden burst of silver dispelled its suppression, making Shaw lose his mobility. I saw the stone statue holding up the stone sword in its hand, facing the thunder, and at the moment the thunder introduced the stone sword into the ground, it plunged the stone sword into the ground, showing a huge stone statue's unmatched jumping power and leaping high. The thunder introduced into the ground erupted in an instant, and the huge force dissolved a huge hole on the surface. The stone statue fell into the hole, and grabbed the stone sword that showed some signs of melting and jumped out of the hole. What are you kidding? Leonard's eyes widened, unable to accept everything in front of him. The nirvana that I put so much effort into was actually dodged. This isn't a level where you are familiar with skills, is this a level where you can play boss? The flexible operation of the stone statue at the critical moment stunned Leonard. Although it was not to the point of despair, Leonard was a little disappointed that the big move he had finally managed to save was actually dodged. The thunder dissipated, and the stone sword completely channeled the power of the thunder into the ground, leaving a deep pit in the floor. Without the thunder snake, the stone statue regained its ability to move, and once again held the stone sword and slashed at Leonard. This time its goal is quite clear, which is Leonard who almost sent him away with a big move. Even Midgard, which is closer to it, doesn't care. Although Leonard was a little lost, he wouldn't be so lost that he would lose his life. It's just that the range of the stone sword that came suddenly was too large, Leonard doubted that he couldn't dodge it. If you can't avoid it, you have to hide. It's better to be hit by the aftermath than to be hit by the front. Armor protection. Leonard rolled to the side, while casting the iron armor curse on himself. The giant sword with violent wind pressure passed Leonard's iron armor curse, and the wind pressure burst out a strong light spot on the shield, and the unstable fluctuation spread along the light spot towards the shield. Immediately afterwards, the huge sword slammed heavily on the ground, the ground trembled, and the flying smoke, dust and stones were turned into deadly missiles by the terrible impact. The shield became precarious, Leonard rolled and landed and jumped forward violently, trying to increase the distance and reduce the pressure on the shield. However, his speed was still too slow, a fist-sized stone hit Leonard's shield, the shield squirmed like a water wave, trying to buffer, but the riddled shield had reached its limit. With a crisp shattering sound, the shield was broken, and the stone smashed into Leonard's head with a whistling sound. Suddenly, a black shadow flashed past, and Midgard appeared behind Leonard. With a flash of cold light, the stone was cut into three pieces. Then she grabbed Leonard and nimbly avoided the follow-up pressure. Leonard, keep attacking. Midgard yelled, your magic is working, give it a few more ruthless blows. Compared with the magic that Midgard tried before, Leonard's magic not only left obvious marks on the surface of the stone statue, but even almost melted the stone sword in the stone statue's hand. Such an obvious effect is much more effective than his own magic. It's not that easy. I can do it again at most. If we are dodged again, it will be over for us. Leonard was held under the arm of Midgard, and said helplessly. He glanced at the ancient sprout on the cuff, the silver radiance on the ancient sprout's body had dimmed a lot at this time, Using that kind of magic in series will put a lot of pressure on the ancient sprout. He could feel that half of the magic reserve in ancient sprout's body had been lost. Only one shot, you can't do this. Midgard fled left and right under the heavy attack of the stone statue with Leonard in his arms, and couldn't help complaining loudly. 
Leonard got angry when he heard this, who are you saying can't do it? Let me down and find me to fight it for 300 rounds. Little kid, don't play dirty jokes like adults, and wait until you grow up. Midgard narrowed his eyes, and took advantage of the moment when the giant sword fell, he rushed over, and his sharp claws slashed across the stone sword. A dazzling spark flashed, and Midgard's legs were slammed when the stone sword was raised, and his face was distorted by his almost polished nails. That stone sword was too hard. What should we do next? Midgard jumped onto a broken pillar, staring at the movement of the stone statue. Your magic can't hit it, and we can't get close to it. Even if we get close to such a large volume, we have no way to deal with it. Midgard felt a little frustrated. At first, she felt that such a large stone statue was easy to deal with, and it could be worn to death just by walking around. I didn't expect the other party to be such a reckless master. The solution lies in my magic. Leonard said seriously, it's just that we have to find a way to limit its actions. Restrict it. Midgard pointed to the stone statue walking towards them. How to restrict it? Use the petrification spell. She told a very cold joke. Don't worry, am I trying to find a way? Leonard said calmly. The more critical the situation is, the more calm you have to be, otherwise you will only make frequent mistakes and make the result worse and worse. Restrict the opponent's actions. Leonard looked at the huge stone statue wielding a stone sword, with a helpless expression on his face. Excessive size is nothing, the problem is that such a huge stone statue has its own magic resistance, and its movements are so dexterous, which makes people very helpless. Doesn't this guy have any weaknesses? Weakness, weakness. Leonard looked up and down the stone statue, trying to find some inspiration in it, enough to destroy the stone statue. Suddenly, Leonard noticed something. The present stone statue is not unscathed. Except for the part that was baptized by the thunder and showed signs of melting, a large part of the surface of the stone statue had large cracks. The cracks are not deep. For a stone statue, it probably didn't hurt its fur. By analogy, it means that there are a little more scratches on a human hand. But this large area of cracks is particularly conspicuous on the stone statue. Because these cracks, without exception, have traces of burnt residue. Where did the scorched marks come from? The flame magic clearly did not hurt the opponent. Scorch marks. Leonard suddenly realized. It was the trace that the plants growing on the stone statue were burned by Midgard's fire magic. Although the flame couldn't hurt the stone statue, it still burned the plants including their roots. And those cracks are the result of plant roots. Although this stone statue has a powerful magic immunity effect, it is just a particularly tough stone when it is not activated. No matter how tough the stone is, it has no resistance when facing the root system of plants. Leonard's eyes were sent across the body of the stone statue, and in just a dozen seconds, he found cracks in various parts of the stone statue. Those are the weak points of the stone statue. Although the wound is insignificant to the stone statue, to Leonard it is the breakthrough point of the stone statue. The embankment of a thousand miles collapses in an ant nest, that is an ant nest. And all Leonard has to do is throw the, ants, in. Midgard, run towards the feet of the stone statue. Leonard patted Midgard, grabbed the hair on her arm, rolled over and landed firmly on her back, I have a way to restrain it act now. Okay, then hurry up. Midgard didn't question it, and rushed to the stone statue's legs at the moment when the stone statue was struck with a sword. The stone statue reacted quickly, and did not pull out the stone sword when it felt Midgard approaching, but pulled the blade like a plow and chased Midgard. The hall shook violently, and a three-meter-wide crack was pulled out of the floor amidst a loud bang. A huge stone sword chased Midgard's figure, tearing apart the ground and trying to swallow the two of them. At this time, Leonard and Midgard had already approached the stone statue's feet. It's now. Go, Impaler. Leonard took out a bitter thorny seed from his pocket and headed towards the crack in the stone statue's leg. This is a seed that comes with double enhancements of piercing male enhancement and root enhancement. With the earth-shattering sound behind him, the seemingly insignificant seed fell into the crack in the stone statue's leg. The next moment, emerald green thorns pierced out of the crack, and under Leonard's control, they cling to the legs of the stone statue and grew upwards, almost instantly leg. Although the thorns of the thorns are not worth mentioning to the stone statue, 
they didn't even pierce the skin of the stone statue, and the flowing paralyzing venom didn't have any effect on him. But the roots spreading inside the stone statue and the tough thorns that lock the stone statue's movable joints have become the key factors to block the movement of the stone statue. The power of plants cannot be underestimated. Soon, the thorns withered and soft green thorns turned into solid dead branches, and the cracks were squeezed open by the roots of the thorns. The force from the inside caused the stone statue to lose its balance, and the giant sword that devoured the earth was forced to stop. Go on, Leonard yelled, another leg. It is not appropriate to restrict one leg of the stone statue. In order to be safe at this time, it is best to control the limbs of the stone statue. Okay, Midgard deftly landed on a raised boulder, turned quickly, and rushed to the other leg of the stone statue. Near the leg, Leonard took the opportunity to throw the second seed. Click, another bitter thorn covered the other leg of the stone statue. Although its venom had no effect on the stone statue, its root system growing inside the stone statue and the solid dead branches left after withering cooperated with the bitter thorn formed on the other leg. It has become a cage that restrains the stone statue's actions. The stone statue with its legs bound grabbed the stone sword with both hands and tried to slap Midgard to death who was swinging around him like a fly, but Midgard dodged them deftly. The next thing is two hands. This is the most important, don't let the stone statue have a chance to use the stone sword to distract the thunder. Leonard shouted, jump up. At this time, jumping up is no different from courting death. Midgard in the air has nowhere to borrow strength and if he is not careful, he will be slapped to death by the sword of the stone statue. Midgard didn't hesitate, but she didn't jump up without thinking, although in terms of daily life and development arrangements, Midgard is not as good as Leonard. But in terms of fighting, even Leonard can't compare to the fighting consciousness of a born werewolf. Midgard had already understood Leonard's intentions from the bitter thorns growing on the stone statue's legs, and she quickly moved away from the stone statue, turning the stone statue's original small slashing action into a wide open and close slashing. But because its legs are bound, its movements become extremely slow, and it takes a moment of pause before the giant sword can be retracted when it falls. And that brief pause is just the moment Midgard needs. The moment the stone sword landed in the stone statue's hand, Midgard jumped onto the stone sword, using the stone sword as a runway, and quickly ran towards the stone statue's arm with Leonard on his back. Seeing this, the stone statue raised an arm and clamored for Leonard and Midgard to slap it. It's too slow, it's too slow, Midgard let out a hearty laugh, grabbed Leonard with one hand, and rolled over to avoid being slapped and landed on the back of the stone statue's hand. With such a close distance, even if Leonard was dizzy by Midgard, he would not miss this opportunity. A seed took the opportunity to fall into the crack on the stone statue's hand, and the fast-growing thorns instantly wrapped the stone statue's arm, locking its joints and palm firmly. At the same time, because the movement of the stone statue was so good, the palm of the stone statue of Yandi was locked with the giant sword. The stone statue tried to raise its hand with difficulty, pulling the thorn bushes and making a tooth-piercing rubbing sound. Brambles and sawdust splashed everywhere, and stone chips fell off the arms of the stone statue, trying to break free from G's shackles. Another seed fell on the last unbound arm of the stone statue. This time, with the help of Midgard, the seed landed on the second half of the stone statue's arm. The growing thorns locked the position from the upper arm of the stone statue to the shoulder armor, so that the stone statue could not raise its arm for a while. It can no longer block the thunder that falls from the sky with the stone sword in its hand. Midgard from the shoulders of the statue. Jumping off his shoulders, he threw Leonard into the air when he was about to land, and caught Leonard when he landed. Although it is embarrassing to be thrown around as a toy, Leonard also knows that Midgard is to prevent the impact of falling from a high altitude from hurting himself. He doesn't have the werewolf body of Midgard, and Ancient Sprout only strengthened his physical fitness to a level slightly higher than the normal level of a common child, without turning him into a superman. This is necessary, but now is not the time to lament this. Leonard jumped down from Midgard's arms, waving his wand to pull the magic in his body. He wants to use ancient magic again, and he will be ashamed. The ancient bud swayed on Leonard's body, and the silver magic power in his body merged into Leonard's body like a tide. On the roof, dark clouds quickly formed, and thunderlight was brewing in the clouds. As if sensing the approaching danger, 
the stone statue struggled more intensely, and the withered thorns wrapped around its legs, wrists, and arms were disintegrating. This is a contest of time. If the stone statue breaks free first, then Leonard and Midgard will die. If Leonard completes the charge first, then the stone statue will be destroyed. Zero. Leonard was holding a magic wand, his eyes were filled with silver light, and the blood vessels on his face were bulging, looking extremely hideous. During this race against time, Leonard had no intention of admiring the devastating scene after the ancient magic was cast. A large number of thunderbolts fell from the sky, under Leonard's active control, they avoided the thorns that bound the stone statue, and landed on the stone statue. The body of the struggling stone statue froze, and its struggling movements paused. This time, the balance of victory was completely tilted towards Leonard and Midgard. The dark clouds on the roof were brewing, and the dull Tianwe echoed in the ruins. With Leonard's relentless output of magic power, the power storage of ancient magic has been completed ahead of schedule. Give it to me, fall. Leonard gritted his teeth, and swung his wand downward forcefully, the huge lightning pillar fell down, swallowing the stone statue whole. Under the shining silver thunder, the stone statue gradually disintegrated, and the thunder snake wandered on the ground. Without the guidance of the stone sword, the power of this terrifying ancient magic was released wantonly, almost. Melts the surrounding ground. The thunder raged for half a minute, but when the pillar of thunder finally dissipated, the original mighty stone statue had disappeared, leaving only a puddle of semi-melted matter like a candle in place. Leonard put away his wand, and didn't feel anything wrong, but the ancient shoots that coexisted with him looked like potted plants that hadn't been watered for more than ten days, and looked like they were wilting. The silver light on it was so dim that it was almost undetectable, if it wasn't for Leonard's hand, Leonard wondered if the two ancient magics would drain it. Fortunately, it was still strong and survived. Phew, I survived. Midgard was relieved as he lay on the ground without any image. Although she was a werewolf and was furry all over her body, she didn't have any image at all. Ha ha. Leonard smiled, fell to the ground and smiled. Yeah, survived. The tiredness on his face was hard to hide, although he didn't consume much in this battle. Midgard was on his physical strength, and the release of ancient magic was mainly played by the ancient sprouts. But in this life and death battle, Leonard's nerves were always tense, and now that the crisis is over, he feels unprecedentedly tired. The same is true for Midgard. In this battle, she did not consume as much physical energy as her normal exercise, and she was not the main attacker. Except for not paying attention to being hit by gravel at the beginning, she did not suffer much. What harm? Just tired. Both of them didn't want to talk much, one was lying down and the other was sitting and recovering their strength until the sound of cracking walls suddenly came from around the ruins, which woke them up. More than just waking up, she was frightened out of her wits. There's no time to rest. Leonard stood up, explore the ruins and we'll retreat as soon as possible. The aftermath of the battle just now was too strong, almost destroying the ruins. Although the ruins have not been destroyed yet, they are also teetering on the verge of collapse. Okay, Midgard turned over and jumped up, but soon became confused again, but what are we looking for? Yeah, what am I? Leonard didn't know what the origin of this ruin was, he only knew that it had something to do with the so-called ancient magic. Leonard took a deep breath and opened his magic vision again. Under the vision of magic, Leonard saw traces of different magic power in the stone statues destroyed by ancient magic. The first is a mysterious symbol floating in the air, and an illusory door behind the mysterious symbol. Follow me. Leonard stood up and walked towards the remains of the statue. Where are you going? Asked curiously, Midgard, who was planning to turn the ruins upside down. She still couldn't see the phantom door and the floating mysterious symbols. Of course I left here, you said it's not like being buried with that pile of stones. Leonard said. As for whether that door was another trap, Leonard thought it probably wasn't. Judging from the symbols at the entrance of the ruins, the strange magic power that fills the place, and the stone statues that are driven by this strange magic power and have extraordinary resistance to common magic, it seems that this ruins is specially prepared for a certain type of people. The characteristic of this kind of people is a group of people who can control that special magic power and use special magic. Strictly speaking, Leonard is not this type of person, he only acquired the characteristics of this type of person with the help of ancient sprout. 
I heard from Midgard that ancient Sprout was a wizard who was turned over in a place found in the rotting ruins. That relic is very likely to have a certain relationship with this relic. Because of special magical powers and mystical symbols, wizards of the common cannot see the truth hidden in an. Maybe there are some secrets hidden in the ruined ruins. Although he doesn't know what the ruins look like now, Leonard knows that the current ruins should theoretically be abandoned. Otherwise, it would be impossible to explain how the treasury that carried the relics became unowned. It happened that Leonard happened to become his exclusive treasury. I don't know who the previous owner of the treasury was. If you have a chance, you can ask the goblins at Gringotts. It would be great if you can find clues, but Leonard doesn't hold out much hope. Washed away by time. Coming to the bottom of the mysterious symbol, Leonard stretched out his hand with ease, and communicated with the mysterious symbol with the help of the ancient buds. At the moment when the finger touches the symbol, a familiar, 553, feeling hits, which is the sense of fulfillment of knowledge pouring into the brain. Leonard's eyes lost focus, and a map appeared in his mind. It was an English-style castle located on a cliff. Leonard looked down at the entire castle from a bird's eye view. Around the castle, Leonard saw a forest and a huge lake that surrounded half of the castle. Leonard confirmed that he had never seen this castle before, but for some reason he had an inexplicable sense of familiarity. Is that the Black Lake? Is this the Forbidden Forest? It can't be Hogwarts, right? Leonard wondered for a moment, his vision suddenly dropped through the walls and floors of the castle and came to a secret room. Isn't this the secret room of Slytherin? Leonard was thinking about it and suddenly found that the style of this secret room was somewhat similar to this ruin. No, it's not similar, it's clearly the same style of painting, who wants to say that the two places are different Leonard can go his eyes and ask him if he is blind. There are secret chambers of ancient magic under Hogwarts, so the underground of Hogwarts is really lively. How many secret chambers are there? I'm afraid the entire underground has been hollowed out and supported by magic. No. I'm not sure if it is. What about Hogwarts? Leonard thought about it, and planned to take a closer look at the detailed location and specific layout of the castle and secret room, so as to lay the foundation for finding this place in the future. However, what Leonard didn't expect was that the picture was suddenly interrupted. To be precise, the picture ends here. It's gone. Leonard was dumbfounded. The location of the next ruin is too rough, right? Who can find it? Does this thing have to test the geography of this kind of people? Or is this kind of people or all monsters with a photographic memory? Just when Leonard was at a loss, the knowledge and memories accumulated in his mind were touched again. The knowledge and memories from the ancient sprouts to the mysterious symbols on the walls of the treasury left some remnants after being aggregated to form a complete magic, and when the picture of the next ruin appeared in the mind, those memories and knowledge were hooked again moved. It's just that they didn't form a new picture, but formed a circular disk with a pointer like a compass. Unlike the compass, although there is a pointer pointing to a fixed position on the disk, there is no abbreviation of the position on it. This pointer points to the location of the next ruin. It's kind of sweet, Leonard thought in his heart. It seems that the preparations for this ruins are still very sufficient. I was worried that the people who came later would not find the way, so I specially left the props to guide the way. Leonard, are you okay? Did you use too much magic power to burn your brain? Midgard asked Leonard when he saw that Leonard was stunned again, pushing Leonard. Leonard woke up with a start and rubbed his eyes. I'm fine, it's still the same. Leonard said, I seem to see the location of another ruin. Another relic, is this still a series? Midgard frowned, don't worry about breaking into it yourself. Don't worry, I cherish my little life very much. I will make full preparations before entering the ruins, and I will notify you when the time comes," Leonard said. Moreover, the address of the other relic is a little vague, and it may take some time to find it. Quote, he didn't plan to look for that ruin in the short term, he was going to school soon, and he wanted to find a place suitable for planting plants in Hogwarts as soon as possible and establish his own botanical garden. Magic can't be left behind either. Although the magic taught in the school is a bit younger, every professor is a leader in the field of magic. As long as Leonard shows a certain talent, I'm not afraid that these professors won't teach him. However, we can't start with the school on magic plants. Although Hogwarts Potions class also has certain dangerous plants, 
such as poisonous tentacles, mandela grass, etc., the professor will definitely strictly control the student's contact with plants. It is even more impossible to get the seeds. Therefore, it is still up to Midgard to collect plants, and then to explore the ruins after the magical plants have been updated. Leonard understands that although magic is very strong, sometimes it does not need the assistance of external forces. Plants worth cultivating that can change styles and play special roles are very important. If it weren't for the help of bitter thorns in this battle, Leonard guessed that he would have been completely cold by now. Plant a batch of plants, use the materials of magical animals to cultivate suitable abilities, and then pass them on to offspring as parents, and use the seeds of those inherited offspring to fight. Leonard quickly set up his future fighting mode. Using devouring to cultivate plants as the kingly way, if the plants are temporarily devoured the materials of magical animals in every battle, even if Leonard has ten treasuries of galleons, he is not enough to defeat him. Leonard, who was meditating, suddenly felt a pain in his forehead, and when he recovered, he found that it was Midgard knocking on his forehead. The werewolf wizard's hands were so powerful, Leonard suddenly felt his head buzzing. How can you be so obsessed at such a young age, and what do you want to be so obsessed with? Midgard complained, we should go, have you found the exit? If we can't find the exit, we can only give that big stone buried. Found it, same old, grab my shoulder, Leonard said. Midgard looked at his paw, the bandage is broken, it's a bit difficult. The battle just now was too intense. When Midgard attracted the stone statue of the knight, it could be said that he almost ran back to his ancestors, and the bandages on his hands and feet were naturally worn away. Seeing this, Leonard took Midgard's hand, and pressed the other hand on the illusory door. A feeling similar to the transfer of the portkey came, and the two reappeared in the number 12 vault, and the galleons piled full of gold curry were still shining so brightly. Seeing the familiar sight, Midgard was relieved. She was really worried that she and Leonard would appear in a ruin with a huge stone statue again. How long have we been in? she asked. Leonard took out his pocket watch and looked at, 15 minutes. These 15 minutes are longer than a month. Midgard sighed and looked at the tattered robe on his body, what should I do? Just go out like this. Will the elf see it? If you see it, you will see it. Can he still bite you? Leonard was so exhausted that he didn't bother to think, and walked directly towards the door, let's go, I'm sleepy. Okay. Midgard shrugged and followed Leonard out of the vault. At the door of the vault, the goblin was still waiting for the two of Leonard to come out conscientiously. The fifteen minutes did not make him impatient. As for tidying up the vault, it's still this kind of ancient vault with exclusive passages, so it's understandable that it takes a long time, but no matter how many galleons are stored in Gringotts, just thinking about it, this goblin has a feeling that he can't use all his strength. Complete motivation. Garen should hide it. At this time, Jin Curry heard the sound of footsteps, and the goblin who heard the movement turned to face the vault, expressing that he was not lazy and at the same time checking how many galleons the guest had taken. Every time she thinks that these wizards will take away the lovely Garen when they come, the goblin feels a heart-wrenching feeling of parting from her little lover. However, soon he had no time to feel distressed. Guest, I'm going back to the ancient spirit now. Just halfway through the goblin's words, I felt a huge furry figure appearing in front of him. The goblin raised his head, and at a glance he saw a tall and terrifying figure with light golden eyes, who could kill three goblins with one bite. Wolf wolf werewolf. The goblin trembled and let out a terrified cry, then rolled her eyes, foamed at the mouth and passed out. Midgard just walked out, Leonard following behind to probe. Is this performance a little too exaggerated? The screams of the goblins attracted the attention of the vault guards, and short winter melon goblins in guard uniforms surrounded Leonard and Midgard in a short while. The problem is that the atmosphere surrounded by them is warm, and every goblin dares to approach. A goblin who seems to have a higher status, listen, the werewolf inside, you are surrounded, quickly put down the hostages, surrender. Midgard blankly looked at Midgard behind him and raised his hand to look at his furry paws. Where are the hostages? Where are the weapons? Leonard. I'm so sleepy, I really want to sleep. Midgard glanced at Leonard, and poked Leonard's forehead with his fingers, don't be distracted, explain. It's so annoying. Doesn't the werewolf not run wild at this time, doesn't it mean that there is no danger? Otherwise, the werewolf would not listen to their pressure, and would have gone up to kill them. 
Leonard yawned, are all goblins so stupid? Quote, maybe I'm too nervous, but werewolves can't infect elves. Midgard shrugged. Forget it, let me explain. Leonard walked up to Midgard and shouted, this werewolf is my friend and came to the vault with me. Came to the vault with werewolves. Upon hearing this, the goblin guards exploded. Sir, please wink if you are kidnapped. A goblin guard whispered, we will save, we will give your vault to your immediate family. Midgard laughed when he heard this, pfft, haha, this will directly make you leave your will. Ordered, Leonard's face turned black, and he cursed, think about it with your barren brains, would a werewolf who was really irrational negotiate with you? Yeah, this werewolf does look calm. Are you kidding, that's a werewolf, look at that poor guy, he must have been attacked by a werewolf and lost his life. But should we be afraid of werewolves? We won't be infected as werewolves. We are worried that the guests will be scratched by werewolves and we will pay compensation. But the guest doesn't look very scared. After a heated discussion, the goblin guards finally reached a conclusion. The two most daring goblin guards walked over tremblingly, confirming that the fainted goblin. What is the situation? After confirming that the goblin was just fainted from fright, and the werewolf looked calm, they also breathed a sigh of relief, and then became angry from embarrassment, and slapped the goblin fiercely with their big mouths. Fine face. It's all because of this guy, they thought they were going to die today. The dizzy goblin who was slapped by the big mouth slowly opened his eyes, and his face was excited when he saw his own race. Great, you are here. He shouted excitedly, there is a werewolf, catch him quickly. The two guard goblins stepped aside expressionlessly, revealing Midgard standing behind them in the boring area. Catch the werewolf quickly. The goblin saw Midgard halfway through the sentence, there are werewolves. Gah. The goblin drew again. Leonard. So sleepy, when will it end? A frustrating farce finally ended after the guard sent the goblin away. A fat guard goblin got on the tackle and took Leonard out of the vault. Along the way, the guard couldn't help but look at Midgard, for fear that the guard would suddenly run away and burn him to death. Midgard didn't even bother to look at him, but stretched out his fingers and pinched Leonard's collar carefully to prevent him from accidentally falling off the tackle while he was asleep. The tackle rumbled to the position of the exclusive channel, Midgard patted Leonard and said, we're here. Ha, huh, where are you? Leonard opened his sleepy eyes and was dazed for a while before regaining focus. We have reached your exclusive passage, and we can return to the place where you entered Gringotts through the gate at the end of the hall, said the guard goblin. After the introduction, the goblin did not leave immediately, but glanced at Midgard and said to Leonard, Guest, although it is a bit impolite to say this, please next time. Do not bring werewolves into Gringotts, it will endanger the lives of other guests. Quote, it's my freedom to bring anyone in, and you have no right to interfere. Hearing these discriminatory words, Leonard said with a strong attitude, a little upset. Originally, he planned to swear a few words, but was stopped by Midgard. Don't worry, I won't come here again, Midgard said in a deep voice, with neither joy nor sadness on his expression. That's the best, the goblin guard heaved a sigh of relief, turned around and got on the tackle and drove towards the vault. Leonard glanced at the expressionless Midgard, and sighed in his heart, feeling that the performance of the goblins hurt Midgard more than the battle just now. Midgard, Leonard hesitated to comfort Midgard, but didn't know how to speak. What's the matter with the sighing look? Midgard squinted at Leonard, you don't think the words of those dwarves can hurt me, do you? Ah, Leonard was speechless, don't worry, I'm no longer the old me. The old me might be so angry that I would tear their mouths apart, because the old me only had this way to get revenge on them. Midgard looked relaxed, but it's different now, the lives of my wolf cubs are getting better and better, and I don't even have to do anything to see them getting stronger and stronger, so. I will not easily resort to violence. Quote, Midgard's awakening surprised even Leonard. It's best if you think like this. Leonard said, now you really don't need to use violence. Gradually, your name will make them so scared that they can't sleep. Yeah, Midgard narrowed his eyes, and now I can maintain my sanity when I am a werewolf, and I still have the power of the full state. Maybe one day, the academy. What about fully controlling the transformation of the werewolf? I think that day will come, Leonard applauds. September 1st, early morning. Leonard got out of bed early, changed into normal muggle clothes, and started to pack his luggage. 
curled textbooks, used cauldrons, dragonhide gloves, neatly folded winter cloaks. Referring to the list, Leonard packed the things he needed to bring into the suitcase. Today was the day to go to Hogwarts. For some reason, Leonard, who thought he would be very excited, felt nothing in his heart, and even wanted to violate a few school rules to add to the fun. Probably because he, a student, has been defiled in the filthy society before he stepped into the ivory tower. No, which student wanted to steal Gringotts before entering school? This is no longer being polluted by society, this is surfing on the tide of social evil. Rowing does not rely on oars, but on waves. The Dark Lord probably called him an expert when he saw it. A boy who could command dozens of werewolf wizards in Nocturne Alley, and now he is going to be an obedient student in school, this contrast made Leonard's heart extremely complicated. After packing his luggage, Leonard packed the enhanced white fresh and normally planted biting cabbage with black cloth and put them aside, then looked out the window. He wondered if it was time for his owl to come back. Goo, sure enough, as soon as the idea came to mind, a gray owl landed on the windowsill and made an affectionate call to Leonard. The owl will indeed come when the master needs it. Leonard took the cage and let Gray slip in. I'm going to Hogwarts soon. It's surrounded by mountains and rivers. It's definitely more comfortable than living in a big city. When the time comes, you can grab whatever game you want by yourself. Gray yelled twice, but he didn't know if he understood. Leonard put the birdcage next to the suitcase, looked up and saw Midgard standing at the door. The two-meter-high body leaned against the door frame, completely blocking the sunlight outside, and it was impossible not to notice it. Planning to leave so early? Midgard asked, as the Hogwarts Express leaving at 11 o'clock. I don't like to miss the time. I would rather be early than late. This is respect for others and myself. Leonard tried to lift the box, but luckily he could lift it even though it moved a little. Thanks to the ancient shoots that strengthened his body. I'll take you there, Midgard said. How about taking you to experience apparition? It will be here soon, in a flash. Apparition, I think it's okay. Leonard became interested. Apparition is a very convenient magic that can teleport to various places in an instant. It can be used not only as a means of transportation, but also as a fast-moving magic in battle. Two wizards who are good at apparating magic are very cool when they fight, they can hardly see people, only the black shadows and brushes in the sky can be seen magic beam. Although everyone who learned Mirage said that this thing is not suitable for use in combat. This magic is very useful and worth learning. After experiencing the door key, Leonard really wanted to experience operation. It is said that this magic is to be experienced first and then learned. But, Leonard suddenly remembered something, and looked at Midgard suspiciously, when did you learn to operate? This magic cannot be learned casually, at least except for the training at Hogwarts, other places require a lot of tuition to learn it. Midgard shifted his gaze uncomfortably, it's been a while since I learned it. How much? Leonard asked after seeing something wrong on Midgard's face. Three days, I learned from that lupine, didn't you say he graduated from Hogwarts? So I learned some magic from him. Midgard coughed dryly, but don't worry, I can already use apparition magic very skillfully. You just said how many times you separated, and when was the last time you separated? Thirteen times, yesterday. Quote, quote dot dot dot. Farewell, Leonard picked up the box and birdcage, carried the flowerpot on his back and left without looking back. Hey, don't go, I'll find someone to see you off, isn't your luggage heavy? Midgard shouted from behind. In the end, Leonard still found a werewolf wizard to follow. Midgard was right, the luggage was really heavy. The werewolf who helped Leonard carry the luggage was the werewolf guy named Robert who had finally learned how to brew the wolfsbane potion. Although the young man was young, he was of great physique. Leonard carried the somewhat difficult box as light as a feather in his hands. The two walked directly from Nocturne Alley to the Muggle Street outside, and took a taxi to King's Cross Station. Do you remember the way back? Standing in front of the station, Leonard asked Robert, who was looking for a cart for himself. He was really worried that this werewolf boy would get lost in this metropolis because he didn't go out often. Remember, Robert nodded, you don't have to worry about me. Although the werewolf boy answered decisively, Leonard was still a little worried. I think you'd better just take a taxi back. Leonard handed the last muggle money in his pocket to Robert Kong, 
who hadn't been important for a long time. Robert took the change obediently, and pushed the cart to send Leonard to the station. Don't bother, you can go back. Leonard stopped Robert, I just go in by myself. It's fine if there are too many people outside the station. It will be very troublesome if someone sees himself with a werewolf wizard in the station, especially near the main platform nine and a quarter. Among other things, even though Leonard was wearing a robe all the time when he was wandering around Nocturne Alley, he was tall and fit. If someone found a person of similar build mixed with a werewolf, wouldn't he expose himself? Although doing so may hurt Robert's young heart, this kind of thing that will attract unnecessary attention must be avoided. Okay, Mr. Wilhelm, goodbye. Robert's earnest face showed no trace of disappointment. Before leaving, Midgard told him to obey Leonard's words 100%, even if Midgard didn't ask him, he will do the same. In their circle of werewolf wizards, anyone who knows Leonard thinks Leonard is smarter than them. They just have to be obedient. Watching Robert leave, Leonard calmed down, trying to get rid of the bully in Nocturne Alley, and treat himself as a normal student. But you can't act too strange in school, muffled development is the kingly way. King's Cross Station is a large railway terminal opened in 1852, and platforms 9 to 11, where platforms 9 and 3 quarters are located, were built later. Due to planning issues, compared with platforms 1 to 8, the platform buildings here are perfunctory everywhere. Anyway, it has neither the style of British architecture nor the simplicity of modern architecture. In short, it is very hip. Leonard stood on the overpass, looking at the platform below with erratic eyes. Going to Hogwarts soon, Leonard's thinking is a little slack, and various messy thoughts are running around in his head. For a while, he thought of the plot story that happened at Hogwarts, at the same time he thought about whether it was an unknown relic located in Hogwarts, and thought of the protagonist group of Harry Potter. Oh, yes, and of course the forbidden forest full of materials. It's Leonard's future botanical garden and where he gets magical animal materials. I'm a bit busy after arriving at school. I don't need strength training, but endurance and agility training are indispensable. I need to find a suitable place to plant magical plants, and I can't miss my studies. Leonard listed his plans in a table according to importance. And the protagonist group, Harry Potter Leonard frowned slightly as he thought of the chatter. In any case, the encounter with Harry Potter was a foregone conclusion, and Leonard couldn't convince himself to speak ill of a good-spoken person, and the friendship seemed to be formed just like that. At this time, it was unrealistic to want to put aside the relationship. With Harry Potter's character, even if he made a new friend, he would never forget his first friend. He will definitely come to him with all kinds of things he thinks are interesting, such as gobstones, wizard chess and so on. But Leonard also didn't want to have an idle savior dangling in front of him all the time. Even if he came to bother him, Leonard hoped that he would come up with decent questions or magic knowledge to bother him. So the question is, how to make Harry Potter such a reassuring savior? Leonard felt that the answer was on the horizon. That is to prevent some self-willed and unwilling people from influencing Harry Potter. Here's to criticize a certain red-haired boy by name. Judging from the mental journey of Harry Potter's enrollment, Harry Potter was actually very worried about whether he could stay at Hogwarts at the beginning. Learn to be stupid by yourself. But such a good savior degenerates rapidly after officially contacting Hogwarts, almost becoming a bad king who only knows how to eat talent. All thanks to a certain red-haired teenager. Once again, name and criticize the red-haired teenager, Ron Weasley from a pure-blood family. Ron Weasley's character is not bad, and he grew up under the care of his big brother, Tricky, but he is still kind, cheerful and optimistic. Admittedly, this is a pretty good first friend for a novice Harry Potter. But that's all. It is a pity that this friend can no longer provide any quality influence except in terms of character. Look what he did with the savior. While others are learning, hey, Harry, let's play a game of wizard chess. When others go to the library to recharge, oh, there are actually people who go to the library to study, Harry, let's go, let's play a game of wizard chess. Others struggle with their final exams. Don't worry Harry, exams are weeks away, shall we play a game of wizard chess? Harry Potter used the disarming curse to confront Voldemort in the final battle, and Ron Weasley contributed. He also encouraged Harry Potter to go out at night to duel with others, and often instilled some mediocre thinking. 
As for the childish temper of being jealous, it's not worth mentioning. In contrast, the reliable Hermione Granger is much cuter. Although this girl is not very good at making friends, her positive and studious spirit is very suitable for this savior to learn from. It's just that this studious girl doesn't have a strong heart and is easily disturbed by the outside world. As a result, she was picked up by Ron Weasley by chance. But Leonard also understands that it is difficult for him to prevent others from making friends. Sometimes ten people just need a brotherly friend like Ron Weasley. When self-defeating, dragging the people around you to degenerate together will give people a sense of peace of mind. Feeling this, Leonard suddenly felt like smoking, but it was a pity that he was still a kid and couldn't buy cigarettes. These are more melancholy. Hello, does the child need help? Perhaps because he was distracted for too long, Leonard's anomaly attracted a patrolling guard. Leonard came back to his senses and glanced at the clock on the platform at 10.20, it was neither too early nor too late. But 20 minutes passed by when he was distracted. Sorry, I was distracted just now. Leonard glanced at his pocket watch and said calmly. Are you alone? What platform is your car on? Asked the guard. Leonard glanced at his ticket, looked at the nine and three quarters on it, and smiled. How could this platform number be said to exit? I'm on platform nine, right in front of here, thank you for your inquiry. Leonard said politely. Sorry I have to go. Leonard bid farewell to the enthusiastic guard, pushed the trolley down the overpass and walked towards platform nine. Then he stopped in front of a pillar on platform nine. This is the third pillar between platforms nine and ten. Before arriving here, a child who is alone, pushing a cart of luggage, and bringing an owl is still very eye-catching here. But after arriving near the pillar, the surrounding eyes are obviously much less. It's not that there are fewer people, but that when the eyes turn to the pillar, the eyes will be in a trance, and then they will naturally look away. There should be a weak muggle repelling spell here, it has no effect of making muggles stay away, it just diverts sight. Moreover, Leonard noticed that it is not only the third pillar that has this kind of situation. Walking all the way from platform 8, there is more than one pillar that has the effect of diverting sight. It seems that this King's Cross station is more than one magical platform of platform 9 and 3 quarters, which goes to various parts of Europe through different platforms. I just don't know how these magical platforms that start from normal platforms are combined. It's probably the no trace extending curse. Then calculate the timetable and make sure that the trains don't collide with each other when they depart, that's not right. Leonard questioned his guess. The train is not a means of transportation like an airplane, it needs a long track. How can the railroad track be hidden in the traceless extension spell? Are you afraid that the car will not be able to drive to London for a long time? Then if there is no traceless extension spell, a large-scale muggle repelling spell will be needed to prevent muggles from discovering the extra rails. That doesn't seem very realistic either. Leonard remembered that he had collected information on the leaky cauldron before his travels. At that time, in order to prevent the leaky cauldron from being demolished, dozens of wizards worked together to hide the door of the leaky cauldron with the muggle-repelling curse. And this kind of large-scale railway track is too difficult to hide permanently. That relic seems to have the same effect. It is based on Gringotts. No, that door should be just a symbolic door. In fact, it is some kind of transfer. The real location of the relic is definitely not in Gringotts. Otherwise, with the movement caused by that stone statue, I am afraid Gringotts will collapse several vaults. The magical world is really magical, and there are mysterious knowledge waiting to be explored everywhere. With such an exclamation, Leonard pushed the cart towards the pillar. He is not a child, so there is no need to close his eyes and rush over at this time, he should open his eyes wide and take a good look at how the nine and three quarters platform is stuffed into this pillar. The wall is like an illusion without any obstacles, and the surroundings are pitch black, as if it is really stuffed into the wall, as long as there is a glimmer of light in front of it. Leonard silently counted his steps and walked forward slowly. The spot of light became bigger and bigger, and finally it suddenly became clear with the sound of a siren. Leonard squinted his eyes and saw a small station that was very different in style from King's Cross Station, only an old steam train was parked on the track next to the platform. Is this platform nine and three quarters? Leonard raised his head and looked at the sky, judging from the shape of Wykong in the sky and the position of the sun that he should still be on platform nine at King's Cross Station. 
The location hasn't changed, but everything around has. This is Platform 9 and 3 quarters, a magical platform located between Platform 9 and Platform 10, a position that overlaps with Platform 9 at the same point in space but does not interfere with each other. It's like another world. Hello, please give me your luggage, and then go to the platform to check in. A conductor in a scarlet uniform came over and said politely. Thank you, Leonard nodded, watching the conductor push his trolley to the luggage compartment at the rear and then walked towards the carriage. Welcome to take the Hogwarts Express. The ticket inspector took the ticket from Leonard's hand and smiled. Leonard nodded in response, and officially stepped on the train to Hogwarts. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.